Are you really acknowledging him this moment? No one like you at all for a Come on, creatives. The lights come on. Can you watch it? No one at all for a Are we my creatives? The lights come on. Can you watch it? No one at all for a Are we my in the presence of a mighty God. Hallelujah. All right, good morning once again, everybody. Good morning. All right, the energy is not up yet, so we are doing this again, everybody. Good morning. Okay, that's about 40%. Let's take it to a 70. Good morning. And now let's take it to 100. Good morning, kings and priests, unto our great God. Yes, I love that. Now arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The darkness of our world has been incredibly apparent over the past year, decade, and even century. 
If the world ever needed light, it is now. But what does it mean to let your light shine? It means you have a choice and a decision to make today. You have to shine. You need to release God's splendor in your industry and be a voice as a kingdom printer. Ladies and gentlemen, kingdom printers, believers, change makers, visionary leaders, kings and priests unto our great God, welcome to the Light Conference 2023. Can we please do the applause and make it louder? I'm really excited to be here. I don't know about you. Today has been in the books for quite a long time. We've been looking forward to having a day where we are going to gather together as industry leaders, thought leaders, visionary leaders in our different industries to discuss how we can be a light in our world, how we can shine that light that Jesus has asked us to shine because we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are gathered here together today to learn how to be stars on earth. Like stars on earth is the theme for the Light Conference 2023, which symbolizes that you are a star on earth. So let's do something. Touch your chest. Put your hands on your chest and say, I am a star on earth. So I welcome you to this life-changing summit. Today, one woman has gathered us together. This woman is personally to me an inspiration. I call her an enigma of success and kindness. This young woman is a trailblazer, a pace setter, a phenomenal woman. Someone that has taught it out in our heart and has decided to yield. It's our yielding that has brought everybody here today. Can we please give a rousing ovation? To the one and the only. If possible, you can give a standing ovation. Ladies and gentlemen, can we celebrate Jesus in the life of our convener, Oma Wago? Can we please celebrate her better? Now, this is not our kings and priests shout. Come on, make some noise. Aha! Yes, you can have your seat. Thank you so much, Oma, for yielding. It's your yielding that has brought us here today. Thank you for being so such a channel of blessing because I look at your life sometimes and I'm like, God, see what you've done with the life of this young lady who is a trailblazer, someone who people look up to. So I want to thank you. Thank you for yielding. And I pray that your yielding will, will, will lead to a lot of success for everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. My name is Gloria Olufeko. <laughs> and I'm honored, delighted, blessed, elated to serve as your compere today. So will you celebrate me? No, 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 that's not for me. Make it louder. Thank you very much. All right, let's do something real quickly, everybody. Look to your left. Look to your right. Look to your front and to your back. Jam your neighbor a very heavy high five and say you're welcome. Say, I love your hair. Give something. Say something sweet to somebody. I love your wig. Oh, I love your makeup. Your suit is looking dapper. Wow. I love your, ah, see your smile. What's the name of your toothpaste? Say something good to somebody. Say something good to somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, no, let's do something. Everybody bring out your phones and let's take a selfie. Take a selfie with the person sitting beside you. Let's do that already. Take a selfie with the person sitting beside you and say, hello, everyone. I'm at the Light Conference 2020. 23 and post on your social media pages let's do that you're making memories because you do not even know who is sitting beside you i tell you the person sitting beside you is an industry leader are we doing that already to everybody behind bring out your phones and make a selfie come on and you can take a selfie make a video post on instagram and tag us at the light conference underscore stars we would like to interact with your post thank you so much everyone you're welcome quite a number of you came quite early and we want to say thank you thank you so much for coming early it shows that you are indeed um someone who keeps the time so we were celebrating you and we say a very big 
like, welcome. Please follow us on Instagram at the light conference underscore stars. I'll take that again. We are on Instagram at the light conference underscore stars and at Oma Wogo. Oma Wogo is spelled H-A-O-M-A-W-O-R-G-W-U. Please follow us across these two uh, handles on Instagram. Thank you very much. I am quite aware that we have a virtual audience joining us. So can we make some noise for our virtual audience, everybody? Can we give them a round of applause? We celebrate you. Thank you so much for joining us from all over the world, wherever it is you are. You're plugged into the Light Conference 2023, and we want to say that we love you, we celebrate you, and I want to ensure that I'm going to promise you that everything that happens in this room, you'll also feel that effect, and you wouldn't even feel that you're not in this room with us. So I celebrate you. Let me see your favorite emojis in the chat box. If you're excited to be here, give me your favorite emojis in the chat box. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Light Conference 2023. Let's do something. Whose session are you looking forward to the most? I can't hear you now. Come on, talk to me, talk to me. Mr. Foy? Everybody, everybody, every session, every session. I'm looking forward to every single session today. Yes. Okay, um, I understand that there are some people that came in from La outside of Lagos. If from outside of Lagos, can you wave your hand to me? Oh, thank you. Can look at them. Look at them. Can you stand up? Let's celebrate you. Come and celebrate them, Lagosians. If you are from Ikoro, do a question. Go to It's also outside of Lagos, so you can stand. It's okay. Thank you so much for coming. Where are you? Where did you come from? Talk to me. Let me see. Ogun State. What about you? Okay, Ogun State. What about you? Ikoro. Oh, okay. 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 No, it's okay. You know, I said it. Ikoro, do a question. Go tell do. It's outside of Lagos. We celebrate you. Thank you so much for coming to the Light Conference 2023. All right, let's not waste any more time. I will be bringing up the convener for her welcome address. And um, the convener is somebody that has brought us together. She's the reason that we are here. God, and then she's the reason that we are here. So uh, let's give her honor as she comes up. Ladies and gentlemen, the Light Conference 2023. With Jesus, joy in your heart. Celebrate the beautiful Oma Wogu. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> if you need a validation that dreams can come true, this is one. Honestly, this just started about three months. I was on my bed. I just read a book titled Church Shift. If you've watched my Instagram video, you must have seen it. And I got the inspiration to basically do something to contribute to the kingdom of God. And I started praying. Because I'm not somebody to do this kind of thing without God's instruction, right? Because I believe whatever he instructs, he will fund, he will direct, and he will make it easy. And so I was praying, and he took me to Mark 5. And then I read about Joseph of Arimathea. And it was not coincidental that this man, it was stated there that he was a man of influence and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. And it just felt like I was in that same position, right? I have gotten some sort of influence on platforms like LinkedIn. And I'm like, am I still waiting? Do I continue praying for something I can actually go out and execute? And I decided to bring together all of you leaders together here and give you what you need to dominate your sectors and I just want to officially welcome you to the Light Conference 2023. <laughs> Clap. And I also need you to know that the Light Conference is not an ordinary gathering. It's not, a corp it just, it's not just a business conference or a corporate conference, no. The Holy Spirit told me that this conference is going to be an encounter. So if you don't have an expectation, I want you to write it down. You see, when I started reaching out to the speakers, I was scared because of the level some of them have gotten to. But like I said, when God gives you an instruction, he's going to make it easy. And they all confirmed. If you followed our journey, you know we changed our dates, right? We changed our dates, we changed our venue. And every time this change happened, I had to tell the speakers again. 
and all of them were comfortable. Is that not God? Please put your hands together for God. So I want you to actually write down your expectation and tell the Holy Spirit that the instruction of this conference would be eminent in your life. Because I will always say light does not shine because of the light itself, but for those who will see because of that light. I believe that this conference was not given for me or for my benefit alone, but for all of you that would witness a different version of yourself because of the light conference. And prophecies have been coming that in years to come, people would say, if not for this conference. And the funny thing is that those people are you. So I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to be very focused. The kind of people that are coming here to speak to you today are not ordinary people. They are people that have dominated their sectors of influence using God's strategy. And that's what we want to show you because we want you to replicate that success. So welcome again. I want you to have fun, right? But please don't be distracted. And I pray that at the end of this conference, there's going to be a version of you before the light conference and another one after the light conference. Thank you. Now, I thought that applause would be a little louder to celebrate her for yielding. Thank you very much, Omar. All right, to everyone just joining us or just coming in, we welcome you to the Light Conference 2023, like stars on earth. And we want to assure you that it's going to be worth your time because you're going to go home with an avalanche of blessings. We trust that it's going to be an encounter. And we trust God to speak to everybody um, based on your industry, your sector, where you are, where you work. And we trust that when you're leaving here today, you're going to leave here refined, renewed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. At this juncture, we're going to be having our very first speaker for today. And I personally just love this woman because I call her a walking central bank. If you... <laughs> If you know what I'm talking about, right, she's a walking central man because once she walks like this, you just see money falling. So be ready to pack enough today. Did you come with bags? Aha, uh -huh. I love you people. Thank you. Because as she walks and moves a step, you just see dollar. Another step, pound sterling. Okay, so just get ready to uh, pack enough today. She's going to be speaking to us on the financially buoyant star. It's very important that we set the course for ourselves because we realize that money is very important. And if, you, if we didn't have money, we wouldn't have put this together. And so we need to set ourselves in course. And I love the fact that this conversation is the one that we're going to be starting with on how we can be the financially buoyant star. Uh, multimedia, please help me with a profile. Thank you. Multimedia. Shola Adi. Shola Adi Shaki is a seasoned finance coach and chartered accountant with a wealth of experience spanning over two decades. Her unwavering passion for empowering individuals and businesses to comprehend the intricacies of make, manage, multiply money has seen her establish Smart Stewards Financial Advisory Limited in Nigeria and USA. Shola has transformed the financial lives of numerous people across 40 countries, helping them transition from stress to rest, from debt to wealth, and from mediocrity to an extraordinary life. Her impressive academic credentials include a BSc and MBA degree from Oxford Brookes University and Edinburgh Business School, respectively. She is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants of the United Kingdom, and a member 
of the Chartered Professional Accountant of Canada. She is also a certified education instructor in the United States. She is a well-known author and has written over eight books with other articles that are yet to be published. Her contributions to the public domain have been widely recognized and she is a member of the Forbes Coaching Council. With a round of applause and a loud cheer, let's make welcome Shola Adeshaki. The Light Conference 2023, I present to you Shola Adeshaki. Please, can we celebrate her better? Good morning, Max. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations, Omar. I'm glad to be here. And I hope that um, I will be able to do justice to the topic within the few minutes that I have. Um, I like the topic that I have been given. It says the financially buoyant star. How many people are stars here? Now, how many people are financial stars? How many people are financial giants? Whether in the making, whether in your dreams, whether in your aspirations, you get. We are already. Um, and I'm going to be leaving you with a quick acronym that I call BEAT. B-E-A-T. If you're familiar with me, if you have listened to me, you probably would know by now that I am a queen of acronyms, like people call me. But now, BEAT um, is something that I came up with for this meeting. And I hope that it resonates with you and it gives you light. Now, the whole essence of this conference is about light. And I am praying that the light of God will shine into your life as we go through this session. The first thing I want to make you realize is that, not make you realize, remind you. In the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. And there was a lot of darkness. And he commanded light to shine. How many of you remember that scripture? He said, let there be light. And there was light. In Isaiah chapter 60, the Bible says that arise, shine, for your light is gone. And the glory of the Lord is what? Risen upon you. Now, the first thing I want to leave with you this morning is that you are not a light creator. You are a light bearer. Before you came, there was light. After you leave, there will be light. There is nothing you can do to make light exist or not to exist. And that's why the Bible says, arise and shine. Your light has come. You are not the one creating it. So when it comes to your finances, are we together? When it comes to your business goals, when it comes to the mountain of influence that you find yourself, whether arts and entertainment, media and communication, business and economy, government and politics, you are simply a messenger. You are simply a light bearer. And you must not be afraid to shine because you are not the one Creating the light. Are we together? Now, some of us are so intimidated by what we see around. You see those who have gone ahead of you in your mountain of, of influence, in your sphere, in your industry. You look at Oma. She says, this is my first conference. And you're like, God, when am I going to do my own thing? And then you begin to wonder, am I really going to shine? How am I going to make these things happen? You must realize that the light is not something you are going to create. God already created a light that is adequate, that is sufficient for the entire mankind. You just need to step into your light. So what did I say my B is? You are a light what? Bearer. So take your space. Take your place. In business, in media, in politics, in fashion designing, what else do we do? What, what are some of our professions here? Guys, leaders, speak to me. In law, in accounting, in what? In media, in politics, in family, in education. 
in government and politics. Thank you. You are only a bearer. I was at a vigil overnight and I gave them an illustration that we are just like these light bulbs. If the current in this place doesn't go into the bulbs, there won't be any shining. Do you realize what I have just said? If somebody turns off the socket or turns off the power, powering all of these lights, they become empty. So in reality, we are just the bulbs for God to shine through. Do you see? So he says, arise and shine. Your light is come. From where? From God. He didn't say, arise and create your light. Are we together? He says, your light has come and the glory of God is what? Reason upon you. So we are just bearers of this light. You do not have to be afraid about what God has told you to do. You do not have to be afraid about how the finances will come. You, do not be, you don't need to be afraid of your dreams, guys. Sometimes it's not clear when you start. You're like, God has given me a vision. I have a prophecy that I'm going to be a billionaire. But right now, I cannot even afford to feed myself twice a day. Tell yourself, I am a bearer. I am being sponsored. How many of you have God as your sponsor? I have God as my sponsor. I don't know about you. Maybe you have earthly sponsors, which is fair enough. But I have God as my main sponsor. So when you see me shine, I am just a container. God is the one providing the power and the current. Are we together? You are a light bearer. Always, always, always remember that if you want to go far in life, in your finances, in your business, you must realize that our sufficiency is of who? Is who's? Comes from who? Who is your sponsor? Maybe Oma is your sponsor. I don't know. Because this room is too, it's too cold for me. I wrote here, I said, the bulb without the current cannot shine. You are a world bearer. It's not your money. It's God's. The heavens and the earth belong to what? To God. When you came into this world, did you bring anything? The rich people who have died, did they take anything? No, it is something that we do. It is something that we interact with on earth. And the earlier, the better we realize that these things that we see, it is God that makes them happen. And we need to be connected with him. Are we still together? Psalm 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who is your light? Whose light are you bearing? Guys, you are young, but you are very cold. Is it still raining outside? Is that why? Are we serving food? Are we serving tea this morning? Oma, you need to serve them something. You need to get your ginger. Guys, you are light bearers. Number two, remember I said I'm leaving you with an acronym called what? What? Give it to me. What? And we have said number one, you are what? Light bearers. Number two, the degree of your shining in life. The degree of your success, your financial success, the degree of your ability to build wealth is dependent on your ability to cut excellence and diligence. How many of you remember the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25? To one he gave how many talents? Five. To another he gave how many? Two. To another he gave how many? One. When he came back, he wasn't going to judge the person with two using the parameters of the person that he gave five. When the one that he gave five came back and said, Lord, look at what I have done. I have gained five more. What did he say to him? Well done, faithful servant. Enter into what? The joy of your Lord. Now, the man with the second talent came. He said, look, you gave me two, but I have two more. Now, the master said the exact thing. He said, Enter into what? The joy of... Did he say higher joy or lower joy? Listen now, guys. Listen. Talk to me. Talk to me. Encourage a speaker. When I ask a question, anybody that comes on like, up, up, up stage here, 
when they ask you a question, answer. Are we not? Shabir, you said we can quote Bible here. Ah, maybe I should not quote Bible again. Uh -huh, maybe you can relate with it. Now, when the third servant that got just one talent came, remember he had gone to hide his talent. And the guy said, give me the report. And he said, oh, I was afraid. I was worried. I knew you were a wicked master wanting to reap from where you did not sow. Well, this is your talent. I went to hide it. And the guy said, and the master said, you are such a wicked servant. If you knew that I would always want to reap from where I did not sow, why couldn't you just put my money in the bank? Now, if the guy had used that one talent to make an additional talent, he would have gotten the same commendation. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Excellence and diligence. Look, you look at some people's lives and you, you perspire to aspire to achieve their results. You don't know what they're doing. You look at Elon Musk, you say, ah, oh, hmm, he's an unbeliever, he's, he's an atheist, he doesn't even know God. Sit down there. We believers, we deceive ourselves a lot of times, forgetting that God is a God overall. Whether you're an unbeliever, whether you're a believer, the principles apply. The principles of wealth apply to everybody. Do you see? The principles of world creation and multiplication apply. The only thing is that as believers, we have an edge over these people. And we have an assurance that we'll go to heaven. But on earth, it's a level playing field. If you are diligent, remember what the scripture says? See as there a man diligent in his ways, he shall stand before who? The top richest men in the world, 10 of them. The top 10. How many of them are born again Christians? How many of them are believers? The top 20. How many believers do you have there? Yet we believers, we keep going on and on and on and on about prophecies. I am not saying that you shouldn't rely on prophecies. There is work to be done. You've got to be excellent. The guy that got the five talent, as soon as he got his five talent, the Bible said, immediately he went what? He went to work. So what do you have in your hands? The one talent that you have, the two talents that you have, the two gifts that you have. You keep complaining. You keep looking into the hands of others around you. You keep looking at their results. You keep giving many excuses. Only if they give back to me in the UK. Like I, you know, was really upset with my mom. My mom came back to Nigeria with my pregnancy at seven months. <laughs> and I kept asking her, Ma, Kilo shele gongo. <laughs> where they caught, where, where people are pairing to you in your dreams? Why did you have to leave the UK with my pregnancy? For a bad earlier part of my career, I kept saying only if they had given back to me in the UK or in America. Some of us have excuses. Oh, I did not go to school. Oh, I went to a polytechnic. Oh, I, nobody's sponsoring me. Oh, nobody's going to give me money. I want to start my business. But I don't have the resources. Make things happen for you. God will not judge you if he has given you five resources or two resources. He will not use the parameters for ten resources to judge you. You are fine where you are. God is very mindful of you. Are we together? How many more minutes do I have? Number three. A. Remember we are talking about becoming financially buoyant stars. And I am saying number one, B. You are a light bearer. You are not a light creator. Right. Number two, I said you need to cultivate the spirit of excellence and diligence. I was telling them at the vigil last night. Last month, about a month ago, I was in the UK speaking for the Cherry Blair Foundation. And I told them how that journey started. I was driving to work about four weeks ago. No, about four years ago. And I saw a sign post. I said, you know what, become a Cherry Foundation. By the way, this is my 23rd year as an accountant. I qualified as a chartered accountant 22 years ago, to give you context. And as I was driving to work, I saw that fly or something, become a Cherry Foundation. 
mentor. And in my mind, I said, you know what? One day, I'm going to become a mentor on this program. And then, as God would have it, not faith, three months after or so, somebody sent me a flyer and said, Ma, please help us share this program within your community. The Cherry Bear Foundation has a program, and they want women to sign up. And I'm like, sign me up. No, they said, no, Ma, you are, you are a coach. You cannot do this program. I said, sign me up on that program. And they signed me up on that program. I went through the program. In fact, the first day I got to class, people were like, coach, are you a mentee? Or are you coming to teach us? I'm like, I'm here to learn myself. Diligence and excellence. And as they say, the rest is history. Not only did I go through that program, my company got um, a, document, a documentary series done for us. And then I was in the UK in June. We went to have a program. And I sent them an email to say, you know what? I will be in the UK. And I'm, you know, inviting you for this program. And they said, oh, it's a Sunday. We can't come. How about you come over to our office? And the day I came to their, went to their office, Mrs. Cherry Blair was there. She was like, Shola, I've seen so much of your work and what you do. We have a program next month. and would, would like to invite you. Like, yeah, all sponsored. When I got to that program, I didn't realize I was going to be the star of the day. I saw my photos everywhere in the UK. This local Shagamu girl. And then they said, you know what? Because of media, we couldn't announce that Tony Blair, former prime minister of the UK, will be here. But he's going to be here. You're going to take pictures with him. You're going to have a personal sec session with him. And that was it. And it was a dream come true. How did this start? From me seeing a poster and me saying, you know what, one day I am going to be on this program. Excellence and word diligence. Number three, quickly, access. Light will give you access. Two more minutes. Isaiah 45, 3 says that I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches. That's God saying, I will lead you into riches in darkness. But can you access darkness with darkness? You have to carry your light, right? If you want to be financially wealthy and rich, you've got to carry your light, shine your light to access. There's money. Stop saying there's no money in the world. Stop saying there's, uh, since we changed our president, since President Buari came, there has been no money. There is money. And there will continue to be money. So shine your light. The final, final thing is those who will be financially buoyant stars must have a different thought pattern. You cannot be complaining about what people are complaining about. When you go home, go and read Matthew 13, 44. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. You find a treasure hidden. What do you do? Just take the treasure and go away. The Bible said he hid the treasure back went to raise money to buy the entire field. Those who will be financially buoyant must see beyond the ephemeral. You must see, you, you, you know what Elon Musk is saying? He says, I want to buy Twitter. I want to go into space. You see what Doug Mote is saying when he's in petrol, petroleum, right? He's in FCMG. He's in cement. He's in real estate. Those guys are seeing something. And many of us are like that last servant. The one he had, he hid it. When the master came, he said, collect the one he has and give it to the person that already has. Because from him, who does not have, even what he has will be collected from him. If you will be financially buoyant in this generation, number one, you must realize you're a what? A light bearer? You must subscribe to excellence and diligence. Number three, you must access the light that is available in Christ. And number four, your thought pattern must be different. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope with this few points of mine. The Light Conference 2023. If you thought that was profound, can we please give a round of applause? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I know I'm beginning to sound like a siren. Can we wow together? 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Matt. That was profound. I mean, if we ask us to reiterate the points, I'm very sure we all will be able to do that. So let's do that real quickly, everybody. Number one. Number two. Number three. And finally. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again, ma'am. Right, let's take two questions real quickly. One from the audience and one virtually. If we do not have any virtual uh, question, then we will take from the audience. Anybody, please? Any question at all? For Madam Shola? Any question? Any question? Oh, Oma, you have a question. Uh-uh. Oma, why now? <laughs> all right. Come and ask your question. Okay. Thank you, Lady Shola. My question is, what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes believers make when building wealth? What do you think is one of the biggest mistakes? Thank you. Thank you, Oma. Good question. Number one, ignorance. Uh, number two, we ride on this excuse of religion. Remember what I said earlier on. A lot of times we think that because we are Christians, wealth would fall on our laps. The Bible says that God is the God of both believers and unbelievers. There are principles that would help you build wealth. A lot of them. Number one, he that does not work must not work. Not, it's not even what's not, it cannot accept the what? They rob the banks and they rob others. Number one, you must provide value. Money is attracted to value at any point in time. And wherever there is value, there is money. Wherever there is money, you set the foundation for building wealth. So number one, what am I doing? And again, it is not about what you love to do. It is about what people need. There's no time to dissect that. But number one, provide value. Number two, as you start to make money, do not eat with your ten fingers. Right? The Bible said that there is oil desirable in the house of the righteous. Right? But a foolish man spends it all. So, you make the money, you save some, you spend some, just like the farmer. A farmer would harvest his crops, he would eat some, right? He would give out some, he would sell some, and he must necessarily plant back some, right? So, make the money, save out of the money, spend. <laughs> I'm not a finance coach that would say, don't spend money. As long as the world exists, we must spend money. Right. So, Oma, to summarize it, make money. Be a person of value. I tell people, especially, especially young people, they will say that jack of all trades, master of none. There's a time in your life where you'll be, eh? Jack of, you don't have to be master of anything. I'm a chartered accountant. There was a time in my life I did a confectionery business. I actually went to learn how to make donuts, egg roll, scotch egg. And I tell people, I'm not just a chartered accountant, I'm a chartered donut maker <laughs> with my full chest. Because when it comes to money, there is nothing such as shame money. Money is money. And a credit alert would always move you ahead than a debit alert. Guys, you take your babe out on a date and you tell her, wound me today. Injure me. Take anything you want. And then the bill comes and it's 50,250 and you have only 50,150 naira in your bank account. What would happen? Transaction what? Decline. But you go into the bathroom and you tell your guy, oh boy, send me 100 naira. Would 100 naira save the day or not? So why do you say there's something called small money? You must value money. So provide value, save money, value money, Rinse and repeat. There was a time in my life I could not, even as a chartered accountant, I could not account for my finances. I was always broke. Chartered accountant with scattered accountant, uh, scattered 
accounts and finances. I was earning about half a million. Ladies, I couldn't say this was where my money was going. One week after salary was paid, I was always broke. And I would say, village people, village people, village people. And I took really, really, you know, seriously bad decisions. But hey, I learned those things so that you don't, you don't go through those experiences. Now, if I'm not able to save, literally these days, I forget money in bank accounts because I follow the principles. Provide value, save, embrace financial literacy. Follow those who know. Have aspirations. Find whatever your hands find to do part-time, do. I'm not saying be everywhere. Don't say, ah, she has said we should be jack of all trades. I am saying there's a season in your life where you are jack of all trades. But as long as you keep moving, clarity will come and you'll be, you'll be able to consolidate. I hope that answers the question. Yes, ma'am, can I have you up on stage? Thank you. Can we please give her a better round of applause? Thank you so much, ma. Thank you. Please, guys, when you're taking your bibs out, ensure you have the exact amount. Too. <laughs> I cannot assure you get 100 naira. <laughs> Unless you are using your pesha. All right. We would like to present an award to you. So, Oma Woko. Thank you so much, Ma. We would like to thank you for being a light in the business and finance sector. And we pray that you continue to keep shining and dispelling darkness regionally and globally as you establish God's glory on the earth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma. And congratulations. Thank you for being a voice in our generation. Thank you so much, Ma. All right. A round of applause for Shola Adishaki, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Ma. We are indeed grateful. If you're just joining us or you're just coming in, this is the Light Conference 2023. And we just had our very first speaker. And uh, while she was speaking... A couple of persons walked in, and it's very imperative that we give honor to whom it's due. So please, let's celebrate. Join me to celebrate the one and the only Flourish Ubayin. Can we please give her a round of applause? Can we please celebrate with Jesus' joy? Madam Foluke Michael, can we please celebrate her? Can we please celebrate with Jesus' joy? The one and the only Ansam Bolu Okwande, can we please celebrate him? And of course, if you love Tamila Day, you will make some noise. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We are truly honored that you all have come. You are busy people with a very tight schedule, and you've decided to be here today. We are indeed glad. Thank you so much for uh, coming today. All right. Odessa, love, faith, precious. You've lost your phone. If you're here, please... Uh, meet Beatrice behind to get your phone. Please, housekeeping rules. I know we are all children of God, but please keep your valuables to avoid stories that touch. Please, keep your phones, keep your bags. Um, I can only vouch for myself. I don't know about the person sitting beside you. So please keep your phones, your bags, your tablets, your iPads, housekeeping rules. Please keep them so that we do not start reporting stolen items. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to our very next speaker for today. Ladies and gentlemen, I would allow the multimedia do the introduction so you are aware of who is going to be speaking to us. But he's going to be speaking to us on making wealth in your morning. As a matter of fact, I think he made his first million at the age of 18. I look at him and I'm like, God, Gloria, what were you doing with your life at 18? But it's okay. Everybody has their own time to shine. All right, multimedia, please help me with his bio. Thank you. Boluwadu Okwade is a serial entrepreneur with certifications from top institutions like Oral Roberts University and Technion National Institute of Technology. He is also a financial coach who is passionate about helping people create wealth and grow personally. He is the CEO and co-founder of Z Realty, a real estate company aimed at making landed property accessible and available.
Sound. Okay. Multimedia, why are you sounding like Nollywood movie now? Okay. I think we'll just go on and then I'll read this bio when it comes up later. Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus join your heart. The Light Conference 2023. Please join me up on stage. Bolu Okwade. Can we please celebrate him? Is that how you celebrate a trailblazer? Come on. So how are we doing, everyone? Um, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Homer. You're doing a super amazing job. I mean, and you have been doing a super amazing job. It's not today it started. Right? Um, I honestly appreciate every other, one, every other dignitary present here. Right? I have 15 minutes, so please, you allow me to rush through, rush through my session. I hope that's fine. Okay. My job is to make the 15 minutes look like five. So um, can I have my slides, please? Okay, while that's happening, I think I'll pull through. I have a lot to talk about, but again, I hope I can quarrel within my space of time. Okay, so I'll start with a short story. While I was reading the invite for this meeting, um, there was a specific line that, you know, struck me in the invite, which is, this is the first time I'm having a conversation such as this, including some specific details. And it's because in the invite, they wrote specifically that we can include, you know, in quotes, in summary, the religious advantages that helped us to hit this milestone, all right? So while there are a lot of principles here and there, there are a lot of strategies, structure, all of that, um, I'm, I'm going to reel out the in imputing God factors. Are you with me? I'll be very unfair to you to tell you that why we're here, privileged by God's grace is just by principles. There is a hand of the divine. Are you with me? And my job is not just to communicate these principles, but to show you how we hacked the system by the advantage of the divine. Are you with me? Are you ready? Okay, let's fly through. So I, I literally have it. If I wish my slides were here. This is literally like a secret meeting. So I'll tell you um, the generic principles. I'll tell you where you have Ojuru because you're a believer. Are you with me? And how to use it maximally. Does that make sense? And um, we have very unfair advantages in this kingdom. I, I tell you the truth. Very unfair advantages. And it will do you well to do it. So, um, okay. I guess multimedia is having an amazing time. So, I'll just pull through. Um, so, um, quick story. Um, okay. So, I remember being in secondary school. I've shared this story many times. And I was about to write my jump. Um, for those of you that are in the diaspora, jump is short for, I don't even know the full meaning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, so I actually know the full meaning. I wanted you to respond. So, hey, we do. <laughs> so, you know, I was about to write my jam. My dad placed a call to me. We had settled. I'm sorry, I'm going to speak fast so I don't beat out my time, right? right so, we had settled already that we're going to do all of that. And, you know, we're going to go to Covenant University. As I then Covenant University School fees, I think, was about 800 grand. That's 800,000 naira, not dollars, please. <laughs> 800,000 naira. And, you know, so my daddy called me and he said, check me up in school. And he said, uh, how are you doing? I said, I'm good. And he asked me a simple question. He said, um, do you know if you can still change your school to Unilag? <laughs> What's going on? Sorry, if you want to Unilag, I honor you. I promise. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I knew the Lord would have me do something in Covenant University. And so immediately I knew that call was. And he explained to me, he said, we don't think you're going to be, we're going to be able to have enough money to cater for you both, your, you and your brother. And I looked, and something just welled up within me, and I became super annoyed. And I remember uttering a statement, which I wanted to utter with me. I said, money will not change the course of my destiny. Can we say that together? So I went on a very strange search. 
I went on, that's the first time I think I did a stretch fast in my life, right? And then I made up my mind that before I was 18, I was going to study 100 books of finances that year. So I left social media and I was just reading for you. You know when you're just reading for <laughs> morning to night, I was just studying materials. And I was just studying almost any major book of finances. I read and I began to see overlapping principles. You read this one, they're talking. I said, okay. So if these things are overlapping, then it means if I put them to work, it has a high probability of working, right? And then I, I did that and I hit my first million. Okay, my slides are still not up. I meant to show you guys some pictures, but hopefully it will be resolved before I pull through to the end. So can we move on? So um, let's talk about the nature of this money, of this thing called money. I want you to pay serious attention. And um, because of the privilege, um, advantage I have of crossing a chunk of these milestones early, I've had to speak and I've had many questions around the subject of money. And the first thing I have to say about this speak is that many questions is around the subject of money. And the you know first when thing people are very big, the last I tell you, don't speak, focus on money. You're like, hey, don't worry, is, scam me. Money is a scam. I want to be scammed. And the first thing people are very big, the last I tell you, don't focus on money. You're like, hey, don't worry, scam me. Money is a scam. I want to be scammed. And the first thing people are very big, the last I tell you, don't focus on money. You're like, hey, don't worry, scam me. Money is a scam. I want to be scammed. And the first thing people are very big, the last I tell you, don't focus on money. You're like, hey, don't worry, scam me. Money is a scam. I want to be scammed. And the first thing people are very big, the last I tell you, don't focus on money. You're like, hey, don't worry, scam me. Money is a scam. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
Team. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, three, four, are you with me? These days, the number is reducing, right? Barry has done us as well. <laughs> Anyways, so three, two. Once you're done with that, what happens? Hope and believe for a promotion that will give you more money and just die. One day, the Lord told me something that turned my head around. He said, Bolu, so yes, sir. That's how I responded to the Lord. Yes, sir. He said, um, paper is too small, a reason to be the reason for your life. And I asked him a question. I said, what do you mean by paper? He said, what's money? Right? I know it's in, well, um, fiat currency is just one of the many means, but that's the main thing. And I, he told me, do you know how many people, if I ask you now, that's their life goal? Listen to me very, very carefully. It looks like a joke, but I'm telling you, if you sort out purpose early in your life, you have an average head start. Amongst many things, it reduces distraction. You see this randomness that people live every day. Try this, try that, try this, try that, try this, try that. I say it. Your life is too short to be dabbling into so many experiments. Are you with me? Purpose. Why? Are you following what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. And let's think about it together. If your life is lived solely for money, I have a question for you. In the days of trade by butter, what were you believing for? Yam? So your whole life, yeah, is <laughs> not to measure your net worth is in yam. Because there's no point of hoarding anything. Because what you have may not be what they need for you to get what you want. Are you following what I'm saying? And so more than ever, listen, you must chase purpose. Everybody say chase purpose. Another reason why you must chase purpose, listen. I want you to listen to this carefully. God's resources for you are purpose activated. There are certain things in your life that you will not see come alive until you are filling the space that is empty that was the reason for your creation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Purpose. As amazing as Nigeria is, have you ever seen a police officer complaining about uniform? Have you ever seen it? No. As amazing as this country is. Because he's employed and he's serving in his purpose. Every police officer has a uniform in this country. As bad as it is. Are you with me? Some of you, the reason why you are struggling is because you are trying to fight for space while your space is left empty. The Lord had me, dealt with me early. Secondary school, SS2, SS3. I already knew I was going. Are you with me? So everybody say purpose. Can I fly on? Can I fly on? Okay. Now move to the next slide quickly. You guys have done magic on my slide. It's correct. I promise. It's, not, it's them, right? Okay. It's either money serves your purpose or money will become your purpose. You choose one. If you don't have a purpose before you get money, money will become the purpose. So the first P that you have to ensure you have settled in your life is what? Purpose. Let's run very fast. Listen, this is where our advantages are. Let's quickly talk about this. Quickly. Can you please push up with me? I'm trying not to push out of my time. Okay. Okay. So listen. 
So somebody asks a very serious question. Listen to me carefully. This is where your advantage is. I'm going to list the points, and I'm going to list your advantages, your hacks as a Christian. Let's think about it. Right? Imagine two people get married today. I'm using marriage too much, right? This is my second time already using marriage in 15 minutes. I promise you, it's not anytime soon, right? Please just believe me, <laughs> right? Um, two people get married today. When they get married today, um, they're just living their life. I mean, a wife goes to work, husband goes to work, and then suddenly they have a child. And then they tell themselves, oh, we think we need to get um, a maid, right? Somebody take care of this child. And now they employ the maid. Why did they employ the maid? Everybody give me feedback. To take care of the who? Great. If that maid comes and does everything when it's taking care of the child, is the maid fulfilling the purpose by which she was here? No. That means, listen, I want you guys to always think of it like this. Say this to your neighbor. Clay is not cheap. Don't worry. You understand why soon. Say clay is not cheap. Good. I'm in the real estate industry, but I know how much sand is. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. Listen to me very carefully. If... How do you think God creates? So he's just sitting on his throne and with the angels. And um, Gabriel, how are you doing? Ah, those people in Nigeria, they're stubborn. Leave them. Come, 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 go to the U.S. And he's having a conversation with the angels. He said, okay, um, how many people died today? 1,000. Ah, we have to replace them. We have to replace them. And he says, which woman is pregnant there? Oh, yeah, stone her, John. Stone him. This one. Yeah, yeah, better. Give her three. <laughs> are you listening? No. If God is the creator, you must believe that there was a reason for the creation. So that means the assignment is older than the assignee. That's the first thing about purpose. Are you following what I'm saying? The assignment precedes the assigned. Progress. Oh my goodness. I hope I'm not going to run out of my time. Progress. Pay attention to me. Then becomes furtherance in the accomplishment of your assignment. That's the definition of progress. So you see your friends are getting married before you. You said they are making progress. You may not know. The yardstick with which, with which we used to measure progress are warped. Yeah. You cannot know if you are going further if you don't know where you are going. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is important. This killed unhealthy comparison in my life very early. Are you with me? So progress is furtherance while success is the accomplishment. So I'd like to end by this, and i run up to the next P quickly. Run up to the next P quickly. Go to the next slide. Whatever problem was responsible for your creation must be absent at your departure. Then you are a success. If you can handle this carefully, trust me, I know God. He will supply resources. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can we run on to the next P very quickly? So our advantage... Oh, this is why we have advantage. When you go to purpose conferences, I'm, I'm always in a lot of all these conferences like that, and you hear them telling you, um, you check within, you do this. Let me tell you, the person that created you knows it. That's right. Period. <laughs> so this experimental, this, you can cut that process in you. It takes people 10 years sometimes. And even when they find it, they don't have precision. What is precision? If I tell you, buy toothpaste for me, that's accuracy. If I tell you, buy McLean, 500 gram toothpaste for me, that is precision. So when people look through their purpose through the world, they can have a broad view. But when you go through God, he tells you precision. Are you with me? I wish I had time. I wanted to tell you a lot of stories today. My life is full of drama. Plenty of stories. Amen? I'm sorry. I'm also a teacher of the world. That amen may pop out sometimes. Just have mercy on me. Is that fine? <laughs> okay, let's run up to quickly. Passion. So I said three P's. Once you find your purpose, your next job is to school your passion. Let's go. Next slide, please. So I hear people say, follow your passion, follow your passion. Listen, listen to me carefully. Some days your passion no no road. <laughs> Do you hear what I just said? Your job is to school your passion. So your purpose and passion will not always intersect. So you may not be passionate about what you're actually meant to do. Your job is to school your passion in the direction of your purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You school your passion in the direction of your purpose. And why is passion important? Passion, amongst many things, is the fuel that powers the extra mile. Going the extra mile is what I call the standout factor. This is why you'll be paid more, amongst many reasons. 
the standard factor. Passion fuels it. This standout factor, I want you to write that if you're writing in your notes, is the reason why you'll be paid more. My father used to tell me much younger, when I was very young, he would tell me, when he said there were ten virgins, right, in our Bible, eventually five wise and five foolish, foolish, sorry, he would always ask me, he would say, Bolu, why were they called foolish? I said, Daddy, they didn't carry extra oil. He would say, never stop where others stop. It's a principle of my life. So when we get into any business space, our first task is to find where everybody has stopped. And just something is a little mild. Or we go ahead. Are you with me? So you school your passion. So you become passionate about your purpose. Everybody say that I become passionate about my purpose. I run on to the last piece. So what is our advantage here? Listen to me carefully. Our advantage. Remember, what's our first advantage in finding purpose? We have what? Precision. Our advantage in passion, come on now, multimedia. Oh, God. (laughs) Advantage in passion. I read a scripture about Jesus. In, you know, it was prophecy about Jesus, Psalm 69 and verse 9. It says, for the zeal of your, for your house consumes me. This is passion. God can supply passion. Say that with me. So you sleep one day and by the next day your heart is burning for something. I've seen it happen many times. This is a hack. So while somebody is doing it again and again and again and again and again, 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 you just wake up like this. Are you with me? And then you beat the game. Everybody say, I'll beat the game. <laughs> so let's move on to the last P. If you chase these three Ps, I guarantee you there are actually five. Okay, I'm just saying this, thank you. There were actually five, but I had to shut into three because of our time. Everybody say pursuit. So listen to me carefully. You find your purpose. You school your passion in the direction of your purpose. And you pursue vehemently, being driven passionately. Does that make sense? So let me ask you guys a question. Oh my goodness, this is the third example. I promise you I'm not getting married soon, right? Event centers are very expensive, (laughs) right? So listen to me. (laughs) How many of you here... um, I don't think many people here are married. How many people here are married or are not married? I think we'll have to hire. Ah, you guys are slide me. <laughs> now listen to me. As a guy, no matter how passionate you are about probably having a relationship with a lady, if you don't shoot your shots, you can't score the goal. Are you with me? You must what? You must what? Passion is not enough until you sustain the ability to convert the burning desire to the actions relevant for the results, you will not see the results. Are you with me? I remember shooting out in my newsletter, I call it the knowledge trap, where you expect the results of knowing what to do simply because you know what to do rather than doing them. No. You must translate it to pursuit. Are you with me? Let me run quickly. Move on. And there's a reason why I'm saying this very importantly. Because passion is not equal to ability that you like to do it does not mean you can do it are you with me this is very important so i have conversations with people the lord has called me into a singing ministry no problem um we're having a church service lit praise and there are 10 keys in the in the this thing you have confused the keyboardist made him to look like he doesn't know what he's doing are you with me we are off and on are you with me no are you following me? Passion is not equal to ability. Right? <laughs> I remember a young man. <laughs> he met us. And he did an amazing praise and worship from the other end. What I mean amazing? I mean inverted amazing. When it was done, they had to replace him on the stage. I know God called me. I know God called me. But listen to me carefully. God may have said, come. It doesn't mean he has said, go. God called the disciples. It took him three and a half years before he told them, go ye into all the world. Are you with me? The difference between come and go is the adequate equipping and training. So many Christians have heard come and they ran. And now the world is making fun of you. And you are going back and saying, but God said. Are you with me? This is very important. The world has a standard and they won't reduce it to encourage you as a believer. 
As a matter of fact, I don't think the odds are in your favor. So you must upskill your passion to the required standard. Yes, are you with me? Apart from the fact that you won't make waves, you're embarrassing us. Yes. Uh-uh. You buy a Christmas, look at it for God's sake. Are you with me? We're trying to encourage people, listen to the songs of the Lord. You know, thank God for that. Then, uh-uh. they say, no, 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 don't do a good music video. Uncle Job in the studio, <laughs> call him. He'll use his phone and they use their phone to record the whole music video. All of them are saying like, <laughs> no, no, no. Are you with me? Say, upskill your passion. What exactly are you meant to pursue? Pay attention. Four sets. Let's wrap quickly. I think I have about two. My time is up. Ha. Okay, can I list it? Okay, thank you. Pursuit of the sets. There are four sets you should pursue. Number one, mindset. Two, skill set. Three, two sets. And number four, the right set of relationships. These four things, pursue them vehemently, right? Please run, 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 run very quickly, please. I apologize, please. My, oh my goodness, I can't cover all these things, right? I'm sorry, I'm trained to be very disciplined. Okay, I can go on? Okay, thank you, So I think I have one, two more minutes to run. So, what's the first mindset? Go back. Go back. Mindsets. This is the mental framework, what is your advantage? Let me run very quickly. Your advantage is very simple. How many of you have taken a magnet and rubbed a metal on a magnet consistently? What will you see that will happen? The, okay, amazing, yes. Exactly. So you find after a while, the magnet will become what? Sorry, the metal will become what? Magnetic. Listen, you have the privilege of rubbing minds with the creator through his word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you aware that there's a chance that the older you are, the wiser normally you should get? Are you with me? So if we do that and you have the privilege of rubbing mind with the ancient of this, I guarantee you, you will have more wisdom. Are you with me? This is the hack. I pray God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the ability to rub your mind with God's mind. They don't have it. Do it and hack the game. Tell your neighbor, hack the game. <laughs> Run on to the next one quickly. Run on to the next one. Quickly, 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 quickly. Skill sets, right? Like I've already, um, faith is not an excuse to developing the required capacity for an excellent delivery. No. There are many lazy Christians hiding under faith. Faith is not an excuse to developing the required capacity for excellent delivery. No. Are you with me? Please, let's run. I wish I wanted to talk a lot, but I have to just run quickly while we wrap up. The next thing is two sets. A lot of people don't let you, okay. Okay, let's just move. Two sets. Can we please go back? I think I need to show you this. Right? I, I didn't know about this until one day. Listen. Then Moses said, Bezalel and Holiab will give you the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. Everyone that the Lord has helped to have special skills. This is the haku. Oh my goodness. What did I say? I didn't know about this until I met a young lady. She works for a company. And I met her one day. She was speaking, you know, I mean, good English. I said, oh, you must have gone to a very good, you know, maybe primary school or secondary school or diction school. She said, no. I slept and I woke up speaking like that. She lives by her voice now. Are you with me? I'm not telling you. She works in our company. She does, she does her voiceover. Are you following what I'm saying? So skill set, the Lord can do that. And the last one, which is tool sets, right? A lot of people don't know this. Tools are input multipliers. They turn your little into much. We live in a generation that just prides themselves in effort. Are you with me? So I've worked and worked and worked and worked and worked out. Nobody cares about your results. Sorry, your work. Move to the next slide. Quickly, 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 please. Everybody, I want you to recite this. Efforts made does not necessarily equal results attained. People look at results. Tools are effort multipliers. Part of your tasks is to find the tools that is your tasks. So I have it in my week. I call it research time. What can make us do what we are doing easier, faster, smarter at a larger scale? Many people don't know this. So you must invest in your tool sets. Does that make sense? So I think I have come to the end. Um, I have come to the end, please. I do not like to beat my time when I'm giving privilege to speak, right? So um, thank you very much. I hope you received value.
We Jesus join our heart. Can we celebrate a gift to this generation? Bolo Kwade, can we please make some noise? Wow, that was profound, isn't it? Yes. Bolo, please, can we have you up on stage? I have a wife for you. The Lord was ministering to me. So there's somebody behind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bolo. Oh, Mark, please, can we have you for the presentation of the award? Oh my goodness. Before I give Bolo his award, right? When I was in 400 level, Bolo, you were in 300 level. And this guy is an enigma. His support is just beautiful, right? I remember when we used to do Envisage Hall, Bolo would sponsor people to get stuff we used to do. Thank you. I just want to say a big thank you to you. And the Lord has made you wealthy. will continue to make you wealthy. We want to thank you for being a light in the business sector. And we pray that you keep shining and dispelling darkness regionally and globally as you establish God's glory on the earth. Thank you, Bolo. Please, another round of applause for this gift, Bolo Okwadi. Okay, census. How has it been so far? Talk to me. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Loving. Loving. Inspiring. Excellent. Inspiring. And I promise you that you've only, you've not even seen the tip of the iceberg. There's still more to come. Tell your neighbor and said, you, you ain't seen anything yet. Okay, let's do it like you. All right. While Bolu was speaking, uh, two important people walked in, and it's only very imperative that we honor them and recognize their presence. Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus joy in your heart, join me to welcome Godwin Ebok. Can we celebrate Godwin? And of course, join me to welcome the Enoch. <laughs> the Daddy Jubilee. Ladies and gentlemen, Abalaji Adiola, can we make some noise? You're welcome, and thank you so much, sirs, for joining us today. We understand your schedule is quite a tight one, and we're indeed honored that you've joined us today. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. To everybody joining us online, we trust you've been having an amazing time, just as we have in the building. It's been fire since we started, and we cannot wait for the remaining lineup of speakers that would come here to share from their wealth of knowledge and change our lives. So please do not go anywhere. Do not for any reason turn off your streaming platform so that you do not miss out on anything today. Please follow us on Instagram once again at the light conference underscore stars. The light conference underscore stars and follow at Omawogu, H-A-O-M-A-W-O-R-G-W-U. Please, those are the handles to follow. We are moving on to our very next speaker for today who will be joining us virtually. And she's going to be speaking on the timely star, a star that is timely. You know, the book of Esther, Esther let, the, the Bible in the book of Esther let us know that Esther had been created for such a time as this. So you are in your industry, governance, media, law, politics, whatever it is, wherever it is, business, you have been created for such a time as this. So she will be speaking to us on the timely star. Multimedia, please. I am so excited that we get to have this conversation today. There will be your life before this conversation and your life after it. There will be what you believed and what you now believe. My name is Abigail Barnes. I'm an award-winning entrepreneur, founder of Success by Design Training, author, productivity coach, international speaker trainer, and I'm here today to have a next level conversation with you about time. Because when you change the way you look at your time, the time you have will change. 
we all get the same 24 hours. So why don't we have the same lifestyle? Why don't we have the same results? Why don't we have the same success? Your results, freedom and choices come from the actions that you have taken. You can't plant carrot seeds and expect sweet corn to grow. If you want sweet corn, you'll need to plant sweet corn. Your time is a commodity. It's an asset like electricity, oil and gas. Its value is different to different people. My relationship with time has dramatically changed throughout my life. For years, I wasted it, traded it, ignored it, negotiated with it, all the things, until one day when my life came crashing down around me. 1,440 minutes. That's how much time each of us is given every single day. And it's ours to allocate. Let me introduce you to the 888 formula. The 888 formula is the simplest way to divide your 24 hour day based on science and society. Science tells us we need to sleep between seven to nine hours, so let's call that eight. Society tells us we need to be working eight hours. If you're a student, replace that with study. So that leaves eight hours left for your life. That's everything you do on a daily basis. It's the time you spend cooking, cleaning, washing, shopping. It's the time that you spend on your relationships, your family, your hobbies, your life admin. It's also your commute to work or to school if you're doing that. The good news is at weekends, if you don't have to work, you have 16 hours to allocate to your life activities. How you allocate your 24 hours decides everything. So back in 2012, when I was working in a nine to five job in finance, I was investing 14 hours a day into work, leaving five for sleep and five for my life. And two of those were my commute, which meant that I had no life and I was always tired. And I didn't anticipate the consequences of these kinds of decisions until it was almost too late. Now, it wasn't the main reason, but it was certainly a contributing factor to the stroke that I had at the age of 32 on a work business trip. Because if you don't make time for your health, you will need to make time for your illness. There's only so long that these bodies can operate on empty. So how are you allocating your 24 hours right now? And yes, there will be seasons of rest. There will be seasons of work. You will now have this 888 formula in your back pocket. You will be able to refer to it as a reminder that balance is possible. At this stage, I want to say the formula isn't an aspiration, aka the perfect way to live your life. It's a framework to help you to allocate your time. So how will you allocate your time? Each of us has different skills, talents, abilities, and life purpose. How you invest your time will impact how bright you can shine your light. In a world of darkness, be the light. In a world of despair, be the light. In a world of problems, be the light. Your job is to be the light. It's to shine as bright as you can. Your job is to shine so bright that others can't do anything other than shine their light too. So how do we change the world? by changing ourselves, by becoming who we came here to be, by being the light. What did I learn from nearly dying at the age of 32? 
that time is our most valuable commodity. We will regret the things we didn't do, the chances we didn't take, the conversations we didn't have, and the talents that we didn't use. That in order to live our lives, we need to remember, money buys time, time buys money, our health is our wealth, and no one element is more or less important than the other. They all have a role to play in our life story. I'm so excited, humbled and honoured to be able to share these lessons and perspective on time with you today. To impress upon you, my friends, it's your time, you get to allocate it. It's your time, your dreams matter. It's your time. Your time is now. It's your time. Can we please celebrate Abigail Bernstein absentia? A round of applause for her, please. Now, this is not how we started in the morning. The energy has dropped a little. Come on, don't sleep on me. Aha. Thank you very much. All right, if you have questions for Abigail Barnes, we're going to be taking her at exactly 12 noon. So please just write down your questions. I mean, she said some things that are quite profound. At 32, she had a stroke. Um, if you do not create time for your health, then you have to create time to treat sicknesses and illnesses. So it's very important that 24 hours that we all have, we allocate it properly to doing the right things that will in future benefit us and generations to come. So if you have questions for her, please write it down and I would take it at exactly 12 noon. But at this juncture, we're going to have a short interlude with the saxophone ministration. And yes, who is excited to hear that? Yes, I'm excited to hear that. We are having a saxophone ministration now. And it gives me so much joy. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Light Conference 2023 to bring up the handsome, the dapper, a man of God filled with power, wisdom, and strength. And is going to be ministering to us with the saxophone. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our red sax. A round of applause for him, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
love or a sex, make some noise. Wow. All right, let's wow together, my people. <laughs> that was electrifying. Yes, amazing. I love the fact that you did a background work, so you made us enjoy the, the administration. Thank you so much, R.S. Sachs. This will take you to nations in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on swiftly over to the question and answers I talked about the other time. Abigail Band. Oh, okay. It's not 12 then. Oh, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Four minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, then. So, Oma said uh, we should take some questions for Bolu. We didn't take questions the other time because of our time. So, Bolu, we're going to have you on the stage now. I'm going to have a couple of questions for you. Maybe just one or two whilst we wait for it to be 12. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Any question at all from the audience? Can I please have some light? Can I see? Thank you. Okay, one. All right. Do we have any questions virtually for Bolu? Anybody online, please help me check multimedia. Okay, please come outside. Please come. So we can take your questions. Yes, and then one more person. Two of you quickly. So that, that would just be the two questions we can take. Are you asking a question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much for the wonderful session. Okay, the, my question is that the first P is um, purpose. Like, how can someone find is our purpose? Um, that, word, that word find, I, I first of all don't think your job is to find it. <laughs> I think I prefer a word discover, <laughs> right? Um, like I said, there are many um, motivational speaker strategies to find it, right? However, um, we are Christians here. The most accurate, right, is to just talk to God, right? The one who creates had something in mind before he created. Therefore, if you, the created, wants to find that something in mind, which is purpose, simply talk to the who? Creator. I don't want to make it so complex. That simple. Yes. Okay? All right. Um, um, I don't know how to put it. How do you balance, like, working in line with your purpose and this whole whatever your hand finds to do, do it? Like okay. Great question. Um, I think this is a this is a, a an FAQ for me. So usually um, you find people who are in the phase of okay, I think God would have me do this, or I think this is what I'm meant to be doing. However, I'm not clear. I'm not. Oh, I don't even take anything. <laughs> I don't have any of it. So it's very simple. While you are or oh, you are on the road to discovering that, whatever you are currently doing, whatever your hand finds to do. Do it with all thy might. So I'll give you an example. Someone says, um, I'm currently working as a staff in a bank. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if that's what God will have me do eternally. But where you are currently working, right? Work and max out your potential in that place. Are you with me? Don't get to work. Use your initiative. Find a better way to do things. Get there earlier. Leave. The, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So max out where you currently are. And um, you keep inquiring about your purpose. I think, does that clear it up? I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. That's all? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can we please celebrate Bolu once again, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, thank you so much. All right. We're going to have Abigail now. Um, do we have questions for Abigail? Anybody, please? Um, she was the one that spoke on time. Any question from the audience? Anybody has any question? There's anything you want her to clarify? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Okay. All right, then. Let's see if we'll have questions virtually from our virtual audience. Okay, first, can Abigail hear us? And can we see her on the screens? Let's have Abigail on the screens, please, multimedia, so that she can speak to us. All 
Multimedia, please help me put Abigail up on the screens. Okay. That's the camera. Hello, Abigail. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, our mic is muted. Our mic is muted. Please unmute so she can hear me and she can see me. Okay, she can hear me. Okay, okay. All right, Abigail. 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 Sound. Sound. Abigail, I need you to wave if you can hear me loud and clear. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, can you see us too? Oh, wow. Abigail can see us. Can we wave to Abigail? She can see everybody. Oh, it's only me. Okay, Abigail, hi. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have a question for you, Abigail, on time. Someone here is asking, that how do we know we are appropriating time to what matters the most? You talked about fact that we need to ensure that we allocate our time properly. We have 24 hours. How do we know that what we have allocated time to is what is appropriate? How do we know? What, are we to, what determines that? What are we to look out for to know that we have appropriated time properly? Hold on, Abigail, we can't hear you. So let's try to fix the sound. Multimedia. Multimedia, you will not collect balance. So. <laughs> okay, Omar, do we just move on? Okay, please. And we'll see if we can get on Abigail later because of our time. All right. The lady about to speak to us is a woman I admire so much. She's a woman that I have come to love and to respect highly because of her wisdom, her love for humanity, and the fact that she's living indelible marks in the sands of time. She's a woman that has championed the cause of climate action and change in Nigeria. <sighs> She's a woman that wants to see that the world that we live in is a better place. She's pulling every string available to see that our world is better for not just for us now, but even for the generations that will come after us long after we are no more. Because I know that many of you will live to 100, to like 120, 150. So what happens after you are no more, when you're not here anymore? What happens to Mother Earth? So she's pulling every string within our power to ensure that the world that we live in remains even long after we are gone. So multimedia, this time around, please do not sleep on me. Help me with a bio. Multimedia. Foluke Michael is a project management consultant, author, IBM Enterprise Design Thinker, and SDG Implementer. She graduated with MSc in Project Management at the Salford University in Manchester, United Kingdom. She also obtained a certificate in Design-Led Strategy, Design Thinking for Business Strategy, and Entrepreneurship from the University of Sydney, Australia. Now, Foluke is the CEO and Project Director of the Creative Youth Community Development Initiative. She created CYIAC 
Corruption Busters and other anti-corruption initiatives to curb corruption through educational and creative development in children and youth. Amongst other achievements, she was the global winner of the United Nations SDG Action Award. She was also named the hero of climate action by the most influential people of African descent in 2020. Our latest book, The Green Entrepreneur, was published on Amazon in 2021. Foluke is a lover of creativity and innovation. She helps children and youth to develop their God-given talent. She also has a strong passion for women empowerment, arts, culture, and creative enterprise development. The Light Conference 2023 with Jesus Joy in your heart. Join me to bring up on stage Foluke Michael. I told you she's an angel, an actual angel. Come on now, make that applause louder. You're welcome, man. Oh, man, I'm very emotional. I don't want to cry. <laughs> I feel so fulfilled. Each time I attend, my mentee is doing great. I just thank God because my purpose on earth is being fulfilled. Oh, man, I'm proud of you. It's a long story. We can't tell it right now. Thank you for what you do. I'm proud. I'm sure Father in level is looking up to us and saying, we have not started. Thank you for following the good path. Thank you. So I don't come for meetings without the Holy Spirit inspiring me. For months, you have sent this to me and never looked at it. Three days ago, I was asking, what should I say? No response. Yesterday, I said, God, am I just going to come here to fumble? And I heard in my spirit a story. I said, God, oh, story. What kind of story is this again? And he expanded my mind beyond here. He taught me. He took me to his room. And he taught me. Oma, I just looked at my topic about as... Um, my dearest glorious was reading out the topic. I never saw the topic. I was shaking, literally. And I looked at the topic. I had to get my laptop. And I saw the global star. God is awesome. That was what he shared with me. And I'll tell you a short story. It was, I'll read fast because this 15 minutes is very short, but I'll, I'll make it. By God's grace. It was in the early hours of Sunday, 11th of February, 20, 2001. A very freezy, chilly night. Jadesola is my uh, character here. She was exhausted from loads of work. This is a Jade that goes leave home like 5 a.m. in the city of Lagos. Oh my God. Oh my God, I don't know, it's God. Oh my God. Bless you to the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, right. And then, sometimes when she gets home, she could barely remove her shoes. She just goes straight to bed. Because Lagos is really ethic, right? And this particular night, Jade Sola, was ex practically exhausted. She slept with, you know, makeup, everything. You know what we do in Lagos. And she did not even bother to go to the bathroom. And then she fell, as she fell asleep. Yeah, this other had a dream. She was among some older white men. You know, when you're in a hall with white men and women, white hair, older, right? And Yeah, this other was just a jewel. And she was called for a particular award. Right in the midst of all white. Maybe rich, right? And um, the right dress was really glamorous, beautiful. A young African Lagos babe in the midst of these particular people. And it was in the West. And um, the award was called for and was a special announcement. 
That is all I walk the aisle. She received the award. And in particular announcement, she was engrossed. She was living in the world that she could never imagine. And she suddenly woke up. It was a dream. It was a dream. You could imagine what kind of dream. This is like a now in trance. And the daddy couldn't get the dream off her head. Her life revolved around the picture as she walked at that towards that goal. You know that goal that you have, that you're giving up. Later that year, she gave up her 8 to 6 p.m. job. She resigned and faced social impact. Can you imagine? Social impact with just a very little savings. I don't know, some few coins, right? And uh, she was so sure of a great future that she did not see, but it was in her dream. She wanted to come in the present, to live in the future, in the present. That was it. The gold house, the white men and women, the beautiful Western Victorian place could not let her be. She continued with her PP work. Why spending more time volunteering everywhere? The best way to let volunteering for whoever for free. In December 2011, Jade received a letter from a country in the West to participate in a competition. She did not qualify for it. She pushed and pushed and pushed. You know, when you are young and you're going to the, one of these embassy and you're a little girl, the problem is, what is she going to do? But she pushed. To cut the long story short, Jade brought some, from, from, some Nigerian youth on board and they attended. They got the visa right and they attended. The room, <laughs> that drip just came, jumped at her. It was a golden room. Everything in that room was, was gold, right? And she got the award. It was beautiful. A few days later, Jade made headline in the West. Everybody was reading about Jade, the little girl that came to the West and got all the awards in euros and gold and silver. The Nobel laureate walked into that country and saw a headline of a Nigerian that made headline. He looked for Jade. You know what the Bible says? The king will come to the brightness of your glory. It doesn't matter who you are. You're blue, you're red, you're anything. But there's something that you have added called value. Ladies and gentlemen, Jade Sola in, in 2001 is for Luke and Michael. And that award was in Italy, and it was in Florence. And that was the beginning of that dream. The light conference was ordained by God to raise you and me. For Luca is not there. As a matter of fact, I feel to get old. Because what is right in front of me is so large that I am 20 years old right now. And I must fulfill it. So the youth are my best friend. My daughters know I do not have best friends. They are my best friend, and if I need to gist, I gist with them. The light conference, and when something like this is happening, right? It is for us to implement kingdom-based strategies. There's a dream in your heart right now. You're feeling no finance, no, no, we have excuses. But this is so doable. If only you preached my, my sermon, right? So I will not even run through so many things. If only you can hook on. To the creator who actually showed you that dream is able to fulfill it. So what do we see? I'm skipping. What do we see? How do we get into that dream? You just have to do what my brother Bolu has asked you to do. Connect. You read my script. Connect to the God who has given you that dream. In this room, there was a vacuum in heaven real big one, and God sent you, you, I mean you, to come and fulfill it. You are not an accidental fellow in, on the earth, and if you are not fulfilling that right now, I challenge you from today, from this moment, walk in your future, borderless. So, you do not, you are not a Nigerian, you, are, you don't belong to, look, you're just finding yourself here. 
the space, but you own the galaxy, the space. So your thinking must be very borderless, solving problems. The problem should not be Nigerian made. It should be global problem. And this is why you are here. Gosh. In a conference like this, we need to achieve certain things. Me, I'll be writing. I'll be writing. Don't beg me to come and talk anymore. I want to learn. I'll be writing. Right? A counter. The first one, please note. A counter from the light bearer. Two of them have listened to them. You must strike that a counter. Number two, there must be transformation. So if you are walking out of this place without an encounter, without a transformation, meet Omar and replay. Because it is a must. And it's going to come through God's word. Number three, signs and wonder. Jade just told me now that I am the one. Jade, I don't expect you to be local champion anymore after today. This is the word of the Lord for you and many of you here. There must be signs and wonder. You should be able to write on your Instagram account. After the conference, after meeting ABC, this is what my life has become. Number four, a, a platform for the transfer. This is very profound. Of possibilities. There is nothing that is impossible. If only you can think it. I'm not talking about motivational speaking. But realm of possibility that... You can see, like I said, go into the future and make it happen. Listen, Isaiah 61 to 3. I love message. And so we use message Bible to train every morning because we have money devotion and evening devotion with my family. So we go through this every day. He said, get out, daddy. Get out of the bed. If you have message version, please read it when you get back home. Jerusalem, you... I don't know what your name is. Wake up. Now, you are waking. If you're sleeping, because your, your, your dream has been sleeping. Your vision has been sleeping. Wake up and now. And put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen upon you at the light conference. The light is coming. Open your eyes to see. Nations, we come to you. I don't know how many nations I have been to after that. And I'm still not in the fulfillment of my destiny. Because I'm, I've just started. I'm learning. A lot of people are going to be speaking here today. I'll, I'll take my notes. and learn more from young people. I know nothing. So I'm here empty. So that I can get more from this gathering. So, your light. Your light has come at the light conference. Note, how we got light, I ask. How we got light, support, guide, and champion your entrepreneurship journey. How? I will skip because he answered. God is awesome. He knew that 15 minutes was not going to be enough for me, right? He answered, creator, who champions your creator? Are you going to take your Toyota car to Ben's Mercedes workshop? You are joking, right? Just generally. Go to that same God. He will show you. He tells me, stupid. For you, you have just messed up. My daughter is there and I told her one money. The Lord told me that that assignment you went on, I did not send you. I said, boy, I heard it. I only led you. I did not guide you. So as soon as you, she's laughing. As soon as you heard from me, Go. I started going. Okay. She did not ask how many steps. What do I take? God said, this is the AC you're going to get. And immediately, I heard from God. Don't let us be foolish. I was foolish. So he told me I was foolish. So I started running. But he is the manufacturer. So he will tell you, go left. There will be about three steps. Don't wound yourself. Go gently. And when you get to that corner, it's locked. Go through the back of the, 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 this way and don't go straight. Come out from here and enter and get to your destination. But I went straight to the destination and I failed. But it spoke to me that I failed. And something I've learned about God is to accept my failure and ask, which way, Lord? And he has given me another way after I failed. So, let's start from the beginning. I love this because... 
The Lord spoke to me some years back. He said, you're going to write a book on the beginning, project management side of God. I have started. Maybe it will be published in 2030, maybe in 2025. I do not know. The project management, because I'm a project manager, expert. The project management side of God. So, let's start from that beginning. Health created. And I love message version. Please read it in the message version. When he was creating the earth, he created what he saw and what he did not see. What he did not see is your journey because he has created the, 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 the raw material for the journey you are to take in life. So the Bible says, not for you, that he created what he saw and what he did not see. What he did not see is why you are project managers, which we go and discover what God did not see that he has created and is residing inside all of you in this room. The earth was covered with, with darkness and something happened. The spirit began to move. This is where you should go. The world that we are living in is covered. We might be seeing light right here, but there is darkness everywhere. And that is why you have the light. The Bible says your light shines in that darkness. So if your product is still, it has border of Nigeria, you are not there. Your product must be borderless. And then you take your world. And then the kings and the queens and the whoever that sits on the mountain of entertainment, of religion, of politics, all the seven mountains, they will send for you because your light has eventually touched them. And so when God spoke in the beginning, sorry, my voice is so cracky. When God spoke in the, in the beginning, light came. So you are here to take your own light. Go back to the world and make it happen. So the journey in the beginning, like I said, laid the foundation for the now. So in the now, our products are manufactured. A lot of things that have not been manufactured. In this phone, it's iPhone 15, iPhone 20, iPhone 13. So your solution is to refine what has been defined for you to have new products that will shake your world. And I don't talk about unbeliever anymore. We, for look at you are the unbeliever. If your product has not reached the end of the world, because the principle of God is very universal. Whether you're a Christian, you're Muslim, you're a pagan, if you travel into the future, you will get the hand of God to work for you. Now, they do not have Jesus, your Jesus, and my Jesus. They do not have my Jesus, but they have products in your hand right now that you're using. And you now have my Jesus Plus the power of the Holy Spirit that could make you to travel borderless and rule those that have created iPhone and rule Elon Musk himself. But we are not there because we refuse to walk on to the manufacturer. I challenge you today. Roll on the bed if you must. Roll on the floor if you must. Go back to your manufacturer and ask if what you are doing is actually right. At a particular time in my life, I graduated as a civil engineer. I was very good, right? Before the Italian trip, I was already a graduate in 2021. I, I left school in 1998, right? And I was already working unfulfilled. But I knew there was something inside of me. So is there anything? So God took me through engineering. I have seven brothers. God took me through that journey. To be very strong, you can't beat me. I can never give up. Call me any name, I'm still going. Because it's not sinking. Your purpose, that God has helped you to discover, will push you into your destination. So you must be led and be guided throughout the process of creating something out of nothing. Be guided. There must be, in, in design thinking, there's something we call that special feature because we want to produce another iPhone, right? Technology is in the house. I'm, I'm going to my AI course right now. So next time I'm speaking to you, I'm going to be a guru. And then that special feature that you are adding that will make your personal look for you, it's only God that will tell you. And when he tells you, 
you had that special feature. And then your, your product is out. Oh, it's leaking. Not like iPhone. This is really magnificent. There's something about this. Only God can give you the secret to conquer people like that. Because they have traveled into the future. They left. They move out of their body. They walk into the future. You need the spirit of God to take you into that future and rule your world. Listen, none of us will win souls. The level we should win souls. It stopped me about two months ago. I don't know if I told Omar. While I was in Germany, the Lord told me that the way we are winning souls is not working. If I have resort today, all of you in this room times 1,000 will look for me. Right? So, your result as a kingdom entrepreneur is your tool to winning souls globally. And when I get a microphone, whether I am in the UN, they don't want to talk about Jesus. When I have the microphone, in you, they know me. I was in Germany. I measured Jesus. It wasn't the right way, but the microphone belonged to me. For that moment, I will measure my Jesus. So how are you going to get there to mention your Jesus? How are you going to get there? You must look on and the journey starts today. There must be testimonies from you so that we can together shake the kingdom of, of darkness. We wealth. God, I'm not going to be poor, right? We are going to shake the kingdom of this earth with wealth. Wealth unimaginable that is not connected to any human connect. It doesn't have human connection. It's going to be said that Folu was on this podium. Third podium. And I'm saying, let us pray because... All of this award belongs to Jesus. People will know your Jesus. A nation will come to you and your light will shine. I'm rounding up. And how can we, he has gone through it. How can we prosper? <laughs> so I just rush through, brush through. If you don't add value, reward will never follow you. It's a law of compensation. So don't say, give me, help me. It's enough, enough of begging. Please add value. Joseph was in, in the prison. Joseph was wallowing in the prison. He came out. There was a problem. So he said, my God, my God, my special God is going to give you the interpretation. So he came to the palace to, intro, to introduce my God into the king where small idols. They have over thousands of small idols. But they had to listen because there was a problem. They had to listen. Because they needed somebody. Now, let me tell you what happened next. When, the, after he had read out from heaven his solution, who will do this? He knew that you, I'm coming from heaven. You can't find anybody on this earth except me. But he had to sarcastically tell them to look for someone. They can never replace you. Once your solution is from heaven, the Bible says, we'll not read it out. In the book of Matthew 5, 13, I think, you, as you're looking at me, the light of the world, right? A city. Where? Have you read Isaiah, Isaiah 2, 1 to 2, Micah 4, 1 to 2? That on that hills, nations will look for you. They couldn't find you in the office, but you've gone to church at Zion. They said, where is Zion? It's located on the hill in Switzerland, we are going there to find Tebilade, to find Omar, because they are already residing there. Nation, we hold your skirt and serve you, God, because you have solution. So don't ever forget value, productivity, law of compensation, and reward. Reward follows value. Enough of staying in church. God help me. God is tired of you. Kilode, yeah, he has helped you. Go out there. And make it work. The world is waiting for the manifestation of who? For look at it. No, it's me. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you will always get re re reward. I looked one day. I was designing a project. I design projects a lot. I was designing a project for a state. Then I look into pure water. One liter. A bottle of water. Another one liter. And then, <laughs> nice brand, right? But why would you pay 1,500? Was it right this thing we went to? They asked me to pay 1,500 last week for a bottle of water. The same pure water was about 120 naira. The same volume of pure water. What happened to the refined bottle? 
I'll leave that in your heart to answer. People will pay your value. If you have put your price tag, people will pay for it. Right people will look for you. You're not cheap. You are gloriously and wonderfully decorated. You are the, you. You have what it takes in, inside of you. I love Psalm 82 verse 6. It says, follow, you are a God. Yeah. And all of you here are children of the most high. So if I'm shackling, I'm shackling. Please don't say what is wrong with that. I am walking in the light of heaven, of my father, because he created me so beautifully. So please, um, there are two needs that open the, the door of greatness. The law of needs, right? And the law of value. Which one do you want to go for? Needs, are, needs will always be in the world. Go for value. Money will follow you. Mrs., uh, my, my sister, my sister talked the other time and said, you shouldn't look for money. Money should be looking for you once you have value. Jesus or John, who is in your both? I will end with this. Let me leave. I will end with this. Power of relationship. That is what brought us here today. Power of relationship. Who is in your boat? Who did you keep in your boat? Judah, Jonah or Jesus? <laughs> Please, Jonah or Jesus? Uh, uh, Jonah will cause you to lose all your properties. <laughs> Jonah will drain your energy and resources and, and whatever. But Jesus will be sleeping and the storm will be coming. And he will say, become... Oh, ye storm, get out. That is, have Jesus in your boat. Power of relationship, networking, connector, divine helper, body bearer. You need all of them. Find them by the power of Holy Spirit. Don't go and sit down in that office. I don't like going to government houses. I don't travel to Abuja. I, I went two weeks ago because it was specific. I didn't go from 2020, coming for any meeting, Holy Spirit, let them accept virtual. Or <laughs> when they are ready to meet me, let them come to Lagos. So the last Abuja trip I had before last month was in, on February 2020 with Amina Mohammed. That was why I went, because it was specific. I don't travel up and down. You need to tell me why I need to be there. It is not pride. Know your worth. And you know what? The world, like I said, is waiting for you. And the last one is influence. I love that. Influence. The ability to com compel men to buy into your ideology. If you start today and you say, this is the way it should be. You already, it's not influence that we bought. The, what did they do on Instagram? Enhancement. That's not beauty. Breast something. I don't know all these names. I see them on Instagram. And then they put everything. That's not where the value is. You are wonderfully created. It's because you don't know yourself. I'm one of the most beautiful girls in the entire world. But if you say you are ugly, you are ugly. You don't need all those enhancements. Enhance your brain. Once you enhance your brain, you will compel the entire world to buy your ideology. And you become the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm leaving you right now. And what I'm leaving you with is, please... Don't look at my voice because I have been so emotional here. I lost my voice. One thing I need you to look at is the journey start today. There's something I'm creating. It has no meaning. I'm creating it. It has no meaning. So I've been going to God the last two weeks. How will this thing become money? I've been speaking to startup founders. I've been calling so many people. But two days ago, yesterday, it was yesterday, he told me, God told me, call this fellow. It would help you. I don't, even if you are my husband, you are beside me. I'm sorry, oh, I'm different. My calling is different. And you are telling me, go like this. And God has just spoken to me, go like this. I will never follow him. He is, there is no two things about that. Because God is not an author of conviction. He means he's been talking to him. He did not listen. So he's dragging me into shame side. And I must drag him into God's side. Right? Please, don't allow anybody to drag you into all of these things. You are there. God has given you the power. God has given you the enablement. God has given you limitless understanding. You have, you have borderless in your thinking. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He's continuing to speak to you. Today, get back home. Be on your knee. Do something. Mercy of the Lord. Mercy of the Lord. Ask for mercy. Tell him to open your brain to receive idea. Like I said, I was designing. Immediately I called the man. He gave me the contact in New York. Because I, need to, I needed to go there. And I wanted to meet such person. 
And by two hours later, the lady reached out to me from New York. This is what we have been waiting for. Look, I've been asking for three weeks. How do I make this and transfer this social impact into profit? God told me, the God that we're serving is going to speak to you today. From today, get up. Shake yourself from the dust. Get up the bed. Clean yourself up. Be beautiful in your mind. Look into the mirror. I am doable. I am possible. I am challenging the world. I am the solution maker. I am going for it. The Lord bless you. Thank you. If you recognize the role of a mentor in the life of a mentee, I think she deserves a... 2023, please celebrate with Jesus joy for Luke and Michael. Make some noise. Please, you may be, please be seated. Wow. She spoke with so much passion. Hmm. I saw some people, they were doing like this. Because... It takes only a mentor who has seen a mentee grow to understand the kind of feats that Omar Wogu has pulled today. I mean, she's such a strong part of Omar Wogu's becoming. So it's only understandable that she's in a feeling seeing that someone that she has trained and mentored has gathered people from all over the walks of life from different industries to come and learn how to be stars on earth. Thank you so much, Mafaluke, for all that you do for Omar. And I pray that today you are happy, you are looking at her and you are proud. She won't bring you sorrow. I pray that you will look at her every day of your life and you will thank God for her. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma, for sharing of your wisdom, your depth, and your wealth of knowledge. We are honored to have you in our presence today. If you're just joining us, because I see quite a number of persons just walking in. This is the Light Conference 2023 and um, I won't lie, but you've missed a lot. Um, no, I will not lie. You've missed a lot. Okay, but don't worry. There's still quite a lineup of conversations for you, our panelists already. In a short while, we'll be going into the panel session. I want to thank our panelists for coming quite early and for staying till now. We are very grateful. Thank you so much. Okay. Omar would like to present a gift, uh, an award to you, um, Madam Foluke, please. Can we... I mean, it's, it's beautiful to see our mentee present an award to her. And I know, Omar, don't cry you, because I know you soon start now. <laughs> All right, Omar, I know you have a thing or two to say. All right. Okay. Sorry, I just have to give a short story. Please permit me. In 2020, I, I was in 300 or 200 level. And then we were in Covenant University. After chapel service, we'll stay back. If they have an announcement for us, right? Maybe somebody came to give us something or they want to train us on something. And I was seated at that, I can't even remember the entrance. And then one lady came up to the stage and she was talking with so much energy. This is how her energy has always been. And princess is here. We always ask, where does your energy come from? Can I say your age? <laughs> You'll be surprised how old she is. I won't say your age. <laughs> So, after she finished speaking, no, Jerry, when she was speaking, you know when they say the baby in your womb actually leaped? I've not experienced that before, but that day I did. I felt so connected with what she was saying. She was saying that, you guys here, can you imagine yourself speaking to global leaders? I was very young. I never thought of that, right? But this was something I had kind of desired, but I didn't know it was possible. And then this lady came and started telling me how this can be possible. And then she told us to apply for this. I went on, I had to apply. I got chosen, right, as part of the, um, that was when Solution 17 for Climate Action in Covenant University started, and I was one of the finalists. That was how my journey with Mrs. Foluke began. After that, we evolved. I did my NYC with her. <laughs> and she basically has become my mother, really. I don't want to cry. But for years, I had prayed to God for a woman that was beautiful, that was intelligent, wealthy, loved God, and desired global influence. Because this was what I wanted. 
But some of the women I was seeing, is it that they like God, they're spiritual, and then they don't like fashion or they don't like looking good. <laughs> or some of them, they're looking good, but the intellect is not really clicking. And then I just saw someone that checked all the boxes. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. You would, you would not understand how this woman, I want to call her lady, this lady interacts with us as young as we are, when we are talking about AI, when we are talking about social media. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Foluke, God bless you. God bless you. You made me understand that this is possible, that you can have it all, that you can be beautiful, wise, love God, and be influential. And God is already doing it in my life. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so, I want to thank you for being a light in the culture, education, and environmental sector. I pray that you keep shining and dispelling darkness regionally and globally as you establish God's glory on the earth. May your light never go dim. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. I'm short of words. All right. Let's move on quickly over to our very next speaker before we have our first panel session for today. Um, while Oma was presenting the award, the plaque to uh, Madame Foluke Michael, a few people walked in, and it's only very important that we give honor to whom it's due. So the Light Conference 2023, please join me to make welcome Dr. Foy. With that same energy with Jesus' joy, join me to make welcome the beautiful Funto Iboye. And of course, Okay, so I do not make an error. I'll come back to recognize the one more person, just to be sure. But then we're going to have Dr. Foy now come uh, present to us, and he's going to be speaking on using media to intensify your light. I, for one, am very particular about this uh, session, and that's because I am in the media space, and I would like to learn how I'm going to use media to intensify my light, okay? So, uh, Multimedia, are you going to help me now, or I go ahead to do justice to his bio? Okay. Tochuku McFoy, popularly referred to as Dr. Foy, is a communications expert that engineers aesthetic mashups and projects combining entertainment, sport, fashion, music, art, and tech. He manages the best talents and executes creative projects. Dr. Foy is an online video and digital entertainment executive with an extensive experience in sourcing and developing shareable content for the biggest brands. He has a proven track record of creating award-winning and effective, fully integrated communication programs for brands, networks, and people. Dr. Foy is a creative connector who gets it when it comes to entertainment, storytelling, production, and narration. He is a digital evangelist with a passion for technology. With a round of applause and a loud cheer, let's make welcome Dr. Foy. Can we make that applause louder, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Foy? All right, in that same vein, I would also like to recognize the one and the only Funke Akirima. Did she walk in? Please, can we please give her a round of applause and welcome her? You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us today. Dr. Flo Foy, you have only 10 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes. She called me Dr. Flo. Can, you, can I get a timer so that I, I don't actually, you time me. Thank you. Um, um, please, can you make some noise for the, for the host? <laughs> She's a powerful woman. Oh. Uh, if you remember, she said, I said, I'll come. No arguments. She's a powerful woman. Honored to meet you again. 
And to the, to the uh, everybody's here. Everybody's here. I, I greet you all. I gr thank you very much. So my name is Tochuku Mukfore, Dr. Foy. I'm actually a medical doctor by training. I went to medicine in school. Yeah, wow. And I practiced with the military for two years. I worked in um, Yaba. It's called, it's, it's called 84, 64, forgotten. Close to Wayek. So I worked uh, as a doctor. And as a doctor, I worked with the military. I worked with PEPFA. So what, what, what we used to do then, we used to help military guys do stuff. Now please follow me carefully. And as a doctor, you begin to understand there's something called the biology of what? Of belief. Let me explain. Because it will help you. Do you know that if... Hey, chief, play me a tune. It's not on. Help, 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 help him now. Okay, I have a timer. No, 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 but play a tune that is... That... Joshua, someone can just play, play tune. Play, play. Stop. That tune is already making you feel something. This doesn't mean God is here. So play Bonner Boy. Play, 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 play. Something, 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 something. Something, something. He knows Bonner Boy. He's, he's pretending. But play, play something, play something. It, it has changed the mood here. So thank you very much. So the first thing I want to say to you is that 80% of media and entertainment. It's about biology. It's about biology. It's about, how, it's, how, it's, it's about hormones. It's about how it makes you feel. It's about how it makes you feel. I used to work for MTV years ago. I used to work for, with, with, with them. Music makes you feel somehow. It's about biology. It will shock you that what you think is God's presence is, is, is dopamine or adrenaline. And once you begin to understand it, you begin to understand what it means to colonize. What is, when the, 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 the Greek meaning of he who wins a soul is wise means he who colonizes a what? A soul is wise. You don't colonize with tracts and Sundays. You colonize with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with, with colors, with music, with lights. To colonize somebody means to control his biology. If in the first 30 minutes of your morning, you check your phone, raise your hand up. The first 30 minutes, don't lie. Okay, the first one hour of your day, you check your phone, raise your hand up. If you feel somehow, if you don't check your Instagram in a day, raise your hand up. Don't lie. If you, must, if you always scroll to check your emails, raise your hand up. Is that not biology? I put it to you that what you're experiencing is not God. It is your human biology that is now adapting to neural pathways. What I'm trying to explain today is the need for why we have to own media. The Bible was written in Eastern times. When Christ wrote the Bible, when Paul wrote, when these people, they were actually kings. Hope you know. Paul experienced what? A king. So when, the, when, you, when you read the Bible, it wasn't written in democracy or in Twitter. You can tweet your mind. <laughs> hey, God. It was written, but let me tell you who. Those who own media. Do you agree? Media has changed our life. I read an article this morning that the $640 billion that Saudi Arabia is using to push the agenda of sports is now $2 trillion. 
So Saudi is buying all the footballers. They brought Ronaldo. They brought Kante. They brought Benzema. Who else did they buy? Neymar. Who else did they buy? Money. They're going to spend $2 trillion. $2 trillion what? Dollars on acquiring footballers. Why? Is it for profit? How? Where is the profit from that $2 trillion? Where is the... Uh, you spend $2 trillion, but where is the profit? Is it TV, TV rights? Who's watching, who's watching Saudi football? Because they understand that life is about kingship. They understand it. We don't. They get it. They understand it clearly. That kings still rule. If Elon Musk wants to change the world, he can on Twitter. The Bible says, can a nation be born in a day? Yes, Tread was born in a day. It's a nation. How many is high in Africa? 1.2 billion. In, in, on TikTok, 1.3 billion. That's a nation. Can a nation be born in a day? Oh, we, we, we think it's a miracle. Mark Zuckerberg did it. You have your number on, on your, your, your... Check your phone. Your number what? Nine million. You are in Tread Nation. I'm trying to shift your mind this morning. And I have eight mi more minutes. When God said, you are the light of the world, he meant it. He understood it. He said, go to Jerusalem, Judea, and what? The ends of the earth. What would that be now? Go to Instagram, TikTok. Am I correct? Am I correct? So if I have given you the context that the new kingdoms are digital kingdoms, what is the new revival? Content. That's a smart person. So content is the new word. Revival. So how do you marry what I'm saying together? Your content now has to have priesthood and kingship. I speak with so much confidence because I know who I am. I'm Foy. I'm Dr. Foy. Blessed. Priest and king. Excellent. If you check your phone till now, T.Y. Bell is number one on Apple Music. Till now. You know why? We mixed priesthood and what? Kingship. Because content is the new word. Revival. And this is not for only content creators. It's for food, farming, those who are doing real estate, doctors. The world has changed. Perception is what? Is the new engineering. The world has changed. So when she said to intensify your light, I was like, ah! Truth is, there's nothing like darkness intensity. Or when light shows up, what happens? Darkness goes. So the real truth is not to intensify your light, it's to understand what you carry. And understand that every post now is a responsibility. It's not, a, it's not about numbers. Every tweet is a responsibility. Right now, lighting is like, is like it's divine. Excellence is no more a standard. Excellence is worship. The Bible says there's something called the law of first mention. Abraham was the first person to use the word called worship. Hope you know. He said, I will worship with who? My son Isaac. I will take him up. Then Christ now covered it and said, you must kill your son in what? Spirit and in truth. So worship or obedience or posting must be done in what? Spirit and in what? Truth. What, is, what does that mean? It means that the Holy Spirit is not only a comforter. It's a technology. And there was darkness on earth or there was darkness in your business or there was darkness in your Instagram page. But there was darkness on TikTok. Or anywhere. But there was darkness. And then you stay. And you hover. For content. You hover for ideas. My secret is my mixture of priesthood and kingship. I love Bonaboy so much. You know why? He knows he's a king. Listen. Let me say this. If you don't know you are a king. You can never attract divine royalty. Never. 
Never. Not pretense, not fake. I know I'm a king, but I understand. I also know my, I'm, I'm what? I'm a priest. So what, what does that mean? It means that what does, what does, where does a priest live in? In the altar. It means that my life has to be what? A living what? Daily. But I understand that if I don't shine, there's wild on earth. Though. So I stand in both realms every time. I have four minutes. I want to teach something to Christians today that are in media, not in media, that are influential, because you must learn this today. There's something called fact, fiction, and truth. Learn it today. What is a fact? A fact is a measured what? It's, it's measured truth. What's fact? White is what? White. Is it what? Is it fact? What's fiction? Harry Potter. Vivid imagination. That's fiction. But what I don't see Christians understand is truth. Let me explain. A man has been worshipping a rat for 20 years. You bring Christ to him and you don't respect that he worships a rat. What's wrong with you? A belief system is formed in 10 years or 20 years. When you see a belief system, you respect it. Do you know why? That man was formed in God's inner likeness. So what he believed is real to him. So Christians must learn how to carry their truth with creativity, with wisdom in every sector. Let your life be a conversation, not an argument. So embarrassing. They read Dr. Foy. They see me. Oh, Everybody calls me secular, secular. This, they are reading my life. Paul said, I'm what? A living what? I'm not fighting anybody. I'm not arguing. I'm a conversation with, of the divine. Creativity. What of wisdom? What of knowledge? Light. Christ didn't come to argue. Did he come to argue? The guy said, I am a father and what? One. He didn't come to argue. So stop arguing. Stop, stop looking. For, stop being a, a victim. You carry what? Light. Understand what you carry. And as I round up, I would add this. The darkness in this era, the darkness in this era is going to be about the mind. Do you know why? Because everybody right now is looking what? Well, all our attention is what? It's gone. Attention what? Economy. The darkness is about what? The mind. And listen, the world has tried to fix the mind, but they could not. Because the mind is a mixture of priest and king. You don't solve priestly things with kingly things. Please, how do you deal with the mind? Paul said it. For you haven't gotten the spirit of what? Let's call fear what it is. Anxiety, FOMO, depression. Name it. There are many variants to fear. No. But you have what? Power. So you must have a power what? A power, a spiritual life. You must have what? What is love? Respect human beings. Respect humanity. You can't be cocky. Do you understand? Respect. You see somebody come with a non... I, I, I traveled, I was on a trip, a long trip, and somebody wore, I'm honest, somebody wore um, an orange jacket, Lord's chosen. One very rich woman who, Louis Vuitton bag, opened her bag and bought the Lord's chosen jacket and sat beside me. You know what? Honestly, I said, Ma, will this thing save us? I said, Yes, let's go. I know it's a lie. God has saved us. Love that. I know. You get the point. But now I respect human beings. You know, we, we don't respect people. And you, you don't, what you don't honor, you can never change. Then what's the last part? Sound mind. Please, guys, read about YouTube monetization. Read, read. Have a sound mind. Don't be only Have a, you understand? Have knowledge. Have a, thank you for having me. I'm done. That's it.
Great Dr. Foy better. Wow. Thank you so much. Please, you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Foy. I mean, when a media person speaks, you will know the difference. <laughs> okay, so I'm not trying to shade anybody, but thank you, Dr. Foy, for uh, sharing those words with us. Respect is very important, wherever it is, because you can never tell um, what the future of that person is. So it's very important that we show each other respect, wherever it is that you find, whoever, wherever it is life puts you, or wherever it is that life takes you, and show that you show maximum respect to everybody. It's very important. Okay. I must mention that uh, there's going to be a quick challenge. So it's called the picture challenge. Now, there will be two winners who will go home with 10,000 naira each. So all you have to do is to take a picture um, of yourself here, probably outside or inside, and then take a picture of you and your book. So two pictures, one picture of yourself and then the other picture of you and Omawago's book that we're about to launch now. Then you post on your Instagram, Instagram, a hashtag the light conference 2023 and hashtag morning star. Hashtag the light conference 2023 and hashtag morning star. And please tag also at light conference underscore stars and then at Omawago. So I'm going to take that instruction again. Take a picture alone of you here or outside or another picture, not all, and another picture of you and the book, Omawogu's book, Morning Star. Then tag at Omawogu and at the Light Conference underscore stars using the hashtag, hashtag the Light Conference 2023 and hashtag Morning Star. The best two pictures will get a call and will send you 10,000 naira. Please ensure you are using Pampay or OP. We don't want network issues. Okay, I'm just joking. But we're going to send you 10,000 Naira um, if you have the best pictures. Ensure you take it in a well-lit environment. Make sure the pictures are clear and you post on your social media platform. This is not about likes or comments, no. But we'll pick two pictures and then we'll send them 10,000 Naira each. Okay. All right. Uh, I thought I saw Miss Techie. Yes, please, can we make some noise to celebrate, Miss Tekken? You're welcome. You're welcome. Toby, we have a discussion. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, okay, the reason why we are gathered here, one of the reasons why we are gathered here is time for that. It's time to launch. Okay, I almost forgot. Dr. Foy, can we have you up on stage, please? Um, Omawogo has an award for you. You deserve it. Thank you so much, Dr. Foy. I want to give another brief story. <laughs> Sorry. So I'll tell you how I met Dr. Foy. We were both invited to speak at Bowen with Temi, I think it was two months ago-ish, and then we were leaving to Oshun State in the same bus, right? And so I walked into the bus, and I saw Dr. Foy and his friends. I saw Great Man Takit. Right, Great Matakit sang one of my best songs, so I immediately connected to him. And then Dr. Foy, his energy was just everywhere in the bus. And if you know me, I am not the energy, energy person, except online when you see my videos, but naturally, I'm more reserved. So I was just sitting at my own corner in the bus, and this guy was talking about media, about um, shows, about Bonner Boy, etc. I'm like, who is this? Right? And then I went to his Instagram, I saw his videos, and then it was like, oh my goodness, how he connects the kingdom to media, to business. It was so beautiful. And I need you to know that everybody that is speaking here, they were instructed by God. I did not just invite anybody. I got instructions, and I reached out, and they accepted. So I just want to say thank you, Dr. Foy. I appreciate you, because I know how busy you are. Thank you for being a light in the media sector, because that sector is powerful. Keep shining and dispelling darkness regionally and globally as you establish God's glory on the earth. May your light never go dim. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, round of applause. It's constitutional to clap. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Foy. Keep foying. <laughs> uh -uh, was that deep? 
Wow. Gloria, you are deep. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was just kidding. All right, so let's have the book launch right about now. Um, Omar Wago will be launching the Morning Star. Wow. Yes. My friend, published author. I'm proud of you. <laughs> okay. First off, we're going to invite one person, two people to speak about the book. First, I'm going to be inviting Temi Aino to come speak about the book, The Morning Star, and then one more person who has read the book to come speak. Okay, first off, let's have Timmy Aino. I'll, I'll. Okay, please, Timmy Aino, please come speak about the book, The Morning Star. A round of applause for Timmy Aino, please. Timmy? What you want, kid? Come on, Alex. Put your up there, give me your autographs. Yes, sir. Get on, Andre. You want to do it? I'll send up this letter. What you want, kid? I want an autograph. The chap ain't giving no autographs today, so I get on. I want an autograph. Boy, did you hear what I said? Yo, Big Slayer. What's up, chap? Thank, Thank you very much. Here. Thank you. Go on this side. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Where's the sound coming from? Okay. All right, Timmy. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm so, so happy to be here. And I'm so proud we're actually launching this book today. I could remember when... Omar was writing our book because we served at the same camp. We served at the same um, NYC, Etiosa. And then we we're always talking about the book almost every time we see. And Omar would just be giving me content from the book. And every time I see her, and every time I see Omar then, I'm like, Omar, every time I leave you, I live with wisdom. I live wiser. I live like I know what I'm going to do for my business. And she finished the book. I was privileged to read um, the book before today. And I read that book when I was going through a lot in my life. I felt like I was confused. So I was starting a business. And I didn't know what to do. By the way, I'm in the beauty industry. I was starting a business in the beauty industry. I didn't know what to do. And I read the book. I read everything. And in the book, you're, it's not just a book like every other book. The book shows you, it gives you places to answer questions. It gives you places to like read and actually answer those questions. And I did those things and I could say, okay, this is my party rice, this is my diamond. Because the book is actually going to teach a lot, of, a lot about party rice and diamond. When you read the book, you understand what I'm saying. And I'm going to say today that this is a book everyone should read. It's not just a book, but it's a blessing. It's a book from God. It's a book that comes with so much clarity that comes with direction, and you don't want to miss out on this. Omar, thank you so, so much. I'm happy for the gift of Morningstar. Thank you very much, Timmy. Please, another round of applause for Timmy Aino. She's in the beauty industry. Timmy, did I hear Patty Rice? Oh, wow. You heard it, Subolu? Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be inviting the boss of copywriting to also say a word or two about Omar's book, The Morning Star. Please, a round of applause for him as he comes up. Okay, thank you very much. And then I'm going to have one more person. Any other person that has read the book in the building? Anybody? Okay, please, just come out. Are you a morning star? Yes. It doesn't sound like so. Are you a morning star? Yes. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Um, this book, in fact, I don't know I'm going to come up here. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I call this book a Kingdom Domination Manual. When I was like... You can put your hands together. Sorry, because I love this book so much because it spoke directly to me. You know, when a kingdom person writes a book, in this book, she was communicating everything a person can use to dominate your industry, to be at the top of your industry. She gave a lot of frameworks she gave a lot of strategies, and when she started giving frameworks and strategies, I said, oh, this lady is speaking to me because I'm a fan of framework and strategies. 
Now, I'd like to talk about one thing specifically that she talked about. Now, before you, sh before you shine bright, like, it's, okay, you want, to be, you want to shine brighter, but first you need to shine bright, right? How do you shine bright? It gave, it gave four frameworks for you to shine as a starter, as anybody starting out in the industry. Number one, you need to discover the blueprint of who you, you want to be like. You need to discover. That's the first thing you need to do. This book talks about how to discover who you, how to, how to find your blueprint. You need to find that person that does what you want to do. Second thing you need to do is, she, talks, she talked about something, um, she said something about privileged information. See, I have a lot of things in my book, but I'm just, I'm just going to talk about this. She talked about what you know, privileged information. She also talked about how to express what you know. And in under that, she talked about branding, how you can brand yourself as a kingdom citizen. Then people will look at you and say, yes, this is the light. This book is a compendium of intelligence, knowledge that anybody can just use to just get ahead. Now, who do you know? She talked about association. The truth is that who you know really matters. If you stay among, if you, if you stay among goats, you're going to smell like a goat. But if you stay around lions, you're going to operate like a lion. You're going to function like a lion. And I am, I am so privileged. I am lucky to have gotten a copy of this book. I read a soft copy today. I'm putting my hands on this and when the usher just gave it to me, I was like, yes. This is, this is not a book you read once. This is a book you read over and over again because, number one, I was telling the girl that was sitting beside me, I told this girl that this book is a manual, a kingdom dominator manual. I don't want to talk much about this book. Thank you so much Omar for writing about this book. You can see I'm already gingering. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. Please, a round of applause for the boss of copywriting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, please let me have you. One minute. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Victoria Onabu. Um, I am a copywriter, I edit and proofread books. That was how I got the opportunity to read um, Hauma's Morning Star book. I preferred the book. So something happened while I was proofreading this book. You know, I don't know if anybody has experienced that um, while you're working, you just get lost. Like what you're working on is just so powerful and you just feel like you stopped working and you don't even know when you stopped. That was what happened to me. While I was proofreading this book, I stopped proofreading at some point. I was just going. I just kept going and going. And then I remembered, oh, Victoria, you're working. That was what this book did to me. And I am not even kidding. Um, this book is, another thing that I actually loved when I was reading this book was the fact that, you know, how my, um put work, your career, your profession with God. Like she's telling you that God doesn't have to be outside of it. In fact, you are called to be in wherever you are and shine the light that God has put in your life. I loved that so much. The fact that she is encouraging us to show people that, yes, we are in this sector, but we are the light of God in this sector. Don't worry, when you read the book, you understand what I'm talking about. I don't want to, you know, let out too much secrets, too much wonderful things of, on this book. My favorite part of this book, though, is... Um, because she gave so many illustrations. She gave so many illustrations. Um, one of the illustrations I loved about, or I loved in this book was where she said, um, when you're in a room and then you're a light, obviously the room would you know, light up if, if it was dark before, but when there's like two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten bulbs shining, it becomes more illuminated. So you don't have to be the only one shining the light. You as a light, it is good for you to start shining first. But while you're shining, carry other people along so that the light becomes even more for everybody to see. Hauma, thank you for this really wonderful book. And thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for making us realize that we can still shine and put God first in every area of our lives. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going straight into the book launch. And I'd like to invite Omar Wogu.
the woman of the moment, the one that has decided to yield. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, they've talked about the book, and it's very emotional to hear them speak about something that you read. But most importantly, it's not just something, something, something that you wrote, sorry. But it's not something that I wrote. It's something that God instructed. When I was, I like telling stories a lot, right? When I was in 100 level, I got the inspiration to write this book. But then... I kind of got the framework. Okay, morning star. What is, what is a morning star? You know, Jesus was called the brighter morning star in the Bible. So it's basically a creature that shines so bright with beauty and power. That's why at a point in time, Satan was also called morning star, right? And then I was looking at my life at that time, and I told God, God, if I write this book now, will people buy? Because, I mean, I wasn't shining any shining at all. So... <laughs> I decided to grow into the person that can write this book. And so every step I took after that instruction, they were intentional. I knew who I wanted to be when I write this book. Sorry. I knew who I wanted to be when I would write this book. And so I intentionally grew into that person. And so when I was writing this book, God was giving me frameworks, right? Because according to him, king, kingdoms are dominated by kings. If we want to really dominate this earth, I believe that believers are so heaven-focused that you, you forget that the earth was given to you to dominate. So if we can have a lot of kings dominate different sectors of influence, the creator is going to be glorified. You know, there's a level of glory that comes to the creator or the producer when the product is excellent. When you see an iPhone and it's so good, you praise the iPhone company. Why? Because of the product. So Morningstar is basically what I, God has given me to ensure that we create excellent products, all of you here, to go forth and shine in your different sectors of influence. Everybody here has a copy. I want to advise you that whenever you read this book, pray for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because there are some questions there that he asked me to write there to ask you. And as you see, and as you see those questions, he's going to give you the answers. And so one thing I believe and what I want to do with this book launch is that you know how the whole LGBTQ agenda is going and how they are funding it. You know, the people of the dark world, they understand how to penetrate culture and society. And so they channel their resources in the right places. And so when I said on the internet that every revenue gotten from this book is going to be used to sponsor the gospel of Christ, I wasn't joking. Because I know that if I can use my money to push agendas, it will work. The devil is not scared of gatherings. The devil is not scared of when we gather to talk. He's scared of a believer that has wealth, influence, and will use it to push God's agenda. And so if we can decide that this is what we are going to do, sorry, the other people, they're just mimicking our, our kingdom. So us in this kingdom, we are basically playing. We are... I'm still going to have another session after now, so I just want to calm down right now. So basically, that's what Morningstar is. And for this launch, literally, I want to donate 3,000 copies of these books to secondary school students and university students. You see, the education system, they are infusing it with LGBTQ agendas. We can infuse our own philosophy in these children. Because we are raising a new generation. If we, if we don't catch them young, and we allow the other people to catch them young, it might be too late. I don't have all the resources, but I know that with the little that I have, and with some of your support today, we will be able to channel our wealth rightly and infuse society and culture with God's strategies. So I'm happy that this launch is happening today, and I just want to give a big thank you to God. I also want to thank Mrs. Foloke too, because... Last year, when I started writing the book, I told her, and then she gave me access to one book publishing course that really helped me. Thank you, Ms. Oluke. I'm so grateful. And I also want to say thank you for everybody that trusted me to get this book and to be here today. Thank you for all the speakers. The way you're shining your light has also inspired me. Thank you, Timmy. Thank you, Flourish. Thank you, everybody. I'm so grateful. And so, Gloria, we'll, we'll go to the next. Please, a round of applause. I mean, okay, so you want to call the people. Okay, thank you to Oma.
Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to be calling quite a number of persons to come launch the book. As Omar had said earlier, we are donating 3,000 copies of this book to secondary and university students. And the book will not produce itself. We need money to actually do all of these things. So we trust that the people that we're going to call up to come launch this book will do us well. We know that you have the wherewithal to help support this course. So it gives me great delight to call to launch this book, Naya Wogu, a round of applause, please. That's your sister, yes, that's all my sister, Naya Wogu. Can we please give, give her a round of applause better? It shows that she supports. Family support is number one. Oh, my sister. All right. Thank you, Naya. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to everybody for coming here to, <laughs> to see Homa do this big thing. So I used to, make, I used to joke with her that, wow, there are going to be 3,000 people coming to launch a book with you. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, it's not 3,000. It's like 200 or 300. I'm like, no, guys, 3,000. But now I'm sitting down somewhere around there, and I'm seeing all of these people sitting down here supporting my younger sister. <laughs> um, Homa, I'm very proud of you. But you know that, you know, this, you know, you're not surprised I'm saying this. When she tells me, oh, Naya, I'm writing a book, I'm like, all right, I know. I know you write a book. I know you're going to have a conference with 3,000 people. I know you're going to speak in the UN. I know you're going to host a larger conference with presidents, leaders. All, I, I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised that all of you are sitting down here. I'm just grateful to God that it is happening and it is happening at his time. So my baby girl, <laughs> mommy and daddy are proud of you. Your sisters are proud of you. Your family is super proud of you. Thank you for showing us, the ones that are even older than you, the path. I would never take that for granted. You know, I don't, I don't have wings. <laughs> I come to you for, for help. I come to you for direction because I know that God has given you that star. And I will forever be humble to it. So, um, my speech is getting longer than I expected. I will be launching, we, myself and my cohorts, family, <laughs> will be, we'll be launching your book with a million naira. I love you, baby girl. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, champ. Thank you, Naya. Thank you so much. Thank you for setting the bar very high. Media, I have to say this thing is important. Hold on. You don't want me to hold on. Naya has started with one million. So it goes higher. I just told me that you can, all right. <laughs> exactly. So, no, you can't come lower, higher, because we serve the most high. All right. I would also like to invite Omar's mentor, the woman she celebrates and looks up to, Madam Foluke Michael, to come launch this book. It. Baby girl, you've done us proud, right? The music, please. Can you reduce a beat? Please reduce the music. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Money star is here. Oh my. I'm not going to call the price. We know ourselves. We're working with some schools, right? And we're working with more now because we're going to the world. Each of those schools that you and would have, because there are many, you need to select by yourself. We, us, our company that you are part of, would give this box to those schools, especially the schools that have done all well in environmental education. So I think the club, the Creative Club 50, Let's start with the school that are doing well. Give them 50-50 each. 
And as we're expanding, I want to finish reading. As we're expanding, we keep taking this box to these goals that we're working with. So it's not just going to be one million. It's not going to be two million. It's endless. So let's make it a day. And you are in charge. Thank you. Thank you very much, media. Why are you working against me today? Media, I'm sorry now. Okay. Um, Omar also wants any speaker who would like to support this cause. She asked me not to call any particular names, but she says she knows that you are moved by the Spirit of God. So she trusts that you are going to do justice to this. So any of our speakers that has the... Um, Temi Lade, yes. Wow. Can we celebrate Temi? I knew she was going to be number. <laughs> okay. I'm super privileged to be here. Um, yeah, I'm very shy. Forget global Temi on Instagram. So, um, yeah, look at what I'm, you know, like, right now. But um, I'm donating 100K so, to the project. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so much, Timmy. Thank you. Omar, don't cry. You. Uh -huh. Okay, any other speaker that would like to support Omar's course? Or you just do it in camera. Oh, okay. All right, Princess. Princess would like to donate to <laughs> your sister. Okay. Careful. Hello, everybody. Hi, my name is Princess. Um, I read your book. Mommy doesn't know this, actually. <laughs> one night when I was actually working on one of my projects for school, it was on her office, and I was stuck, funny enough, and I said, you know what? She always says something that if you're stuck in something really important and you feel like you are, you are being pressured, you can leave it and go and rest and then come back and you'll find out that your head will just be pouring with inspiration. And I just went into our office where the book was, and I read it. And immediately, I went back to the kitchen where I was working. And I got the inspiration to do that project. And I got 100%. And I was shocked. And funny enough, I was just sitting there. I didn't want to say anything. But then, as Gloria said, I was moved. <laughs> um, I'm part of an American organization called FXP Climate Advocates, who push students in different countries around the world. We have over 200 countries part of that organization. And we have students who actually come to learn from different mentors. And I, sometimes I go to speak in different um, um, schools and universities. And actually, two days ago, they asked for, um, for me to help with their curriculum. And I am pushing forward Monista to be part of that curriculum. It's amazing. And I want students, like you said, it's awful how they are pushing forward things like LGBTQ into the African society. And we are not accepting that. So we as kingdom influencers have to push back and show them in the West, in the East, in Asia, and all over the world that we kingdom influencers, we are here to stay and we are dominating what they felt that they took from us. They, are, they didn't take it, but we are there. I'm pushing forward that book as part of the curriculum. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Princess. Okay, so two more people. Okay, Bolu! <laughs> Bolu, I was saying it. Why are you sitting down there? They're supposed to be here. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Like Homer has said, um, I've known Homer since university days, and um, this is just a manifestation of a lot that has been done. I haven't read the book myself. But it's something I'm going to study. And when I don't have billions, like, um, I'm learning work, <laughs> right? Um, we're going to dedicate 10% um, of the total income of two of our companies for the next six months. Am I going to give that towards the book?
Bola, I was asking how much, but she said you did not call price. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Coach Bori would like to also. Oh, yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And I need to thank you on behalf of everyone here today because um, I'm sure if they would want to express their, how they're feeling, they want to say thank you for putting this together. Thank you for being disciplined enough to hear that God has asked you to do this and you're doing it now. And um, Ugolena has a community of over 10,000 people that we are teaching financial literacy. And I want to see how much, uh, how many of them can read that book. And I uh, want to make sure that they get at least, and maybe not all of them. So personally, I'll be donating 100,000 and the company will be buying as many as possible. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you so much. Um, one more person, any other person, or you just like to see her personally? Okay, Mr. Key is nodding her head. <laughs> Mr. Key, can't you just do that thing now? Money will fall. Why are you doing? <laughs> okay, you would like to learn. Uh, there are... Okay, please come. Uh, I said it. Please come. Let's lunch then after Mr. Key and then she. Yes, and Rookie, okay. I'm actually shy. I wanted to do it in camera, but oh well. <laughs> and I have not read the book, but I know it's going to be great. And um, I'd like to donate 200,000 era to support and hopefully get to more people. Because what you said about the LGBTQ and how um, the devil is trying to push his, push his agenda more is really solid. And we need to really be, be intentional about what we do now. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Good day, morning stars. Can I see the energy? Yeah, this is Mary, mother of Jesus. So that's um. Uh, so I, I just, I caught, I caught something when um, Madame Foluka was say, was speaking, and you noticed me doing. So I'm not even supposed to be seated in the panelist seat, right? Since God has elevated me there, let me do something, right? So um, since I'm a Google certified sales warlord and website designer, right? Anything that has to do with website design for Morningstar. And, um, I didn't know what to do, but I had this strong impression to do something. So I'll be donating 100,000 uh, for Morningstar. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joseph. All right, Rookie. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi, Rookie. Omar, congratulations. I'm so, so proud of you. Um, I met Omar through, I think we're in the same business club. And what you're doing for God is something worthy of emulation. Um, so I'll be supporting the book with 300,000. Yeah. Thank you, Rookie. Thank you so much to everybody who has launched. And I trust that quite a number of us will do that later. We will see um, Omar personally, and then we will launch this book. But Omar, I will be launching this book with the money you are supposed to pay me for this event. <laughs> so just don't worry. <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. <laughs> okay, she said everyone who launched should please come so they can help her with the unveiling of the book and then take a picture. Thank you. So please, can we celebrate them as they come? If you launched a Miller Day and everybody, Miss Techie. Okay, media, she wants you to please. So let's, let's launch the book properly now. So, mm -hmm. Miss Foluke, right? I am a mountain. I am a tall tree. Oh, I am a swift wind. Sweeping the country. I am a river. Down in the valley, oh, I am a vision, and I can see clearly, if anybody like you who I am, yeah. just stand up tall, look them in the face and say, I'm that star up in the sky, I'm that mountain peak up high, they yeah, made it, I'm the world's greatest, and I'm that little bit of Yes. 
yes, we launched uh, this book right now. But something just came to my mind. I don't know, Holy Spirit. So, remember last year when God told me to, we should, you are my accountability partner now. Oh, you didn't do well, Sha. Anyway, we started this level of God wants us to overtake the mountain of culture. You pick one, I pick one. Yeah. We read through, how many books did we read? Do you know that you are going to be read, read, writing book, Money Star, one, two, on each culture? I'll support you. I'll support some mountain of influence that I'm already working in. This is just the beginning. Money Star, one, two, and you're going to be having, sem- is it semicolon? Se- money Star, semicolon, media, Money Star, semicolon. Oh, they know, they know, right? Yeah. Seven culture, economy. I will do art and entertainment. I will do a big part of it, right? Yeah. We will co but you don't need to put my name. You're there. Oh, all of us here, please contribute to the mountain of culture as we take the gospel to the end of the earth. And you're seeing billionaires here. So if you're part of this movement, you're already billionaires. So I hear by lunch, let me speak well now. <laughs> no emotion. Money star one. To the general culture of influence, wise we trend carefully into other culture of influence globally. And one day, all of us will walk the streets of New York, Florence, Berlin, Munich. I'm carefully selecting them, right? Greece to run a road show for Jesus Christ. So in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, hereby obey the mountain of fortune. Congratulations. Congratulations, Omar. Let's take pictures. I am a giant. All right, please, photos, please. I am a Nico Just stand up tall, look them in the face and say I'm that star up in the sky I'm that mountain Thank you so much, thank you so much Congratulations on my walk Well done, well done So thank you very much, media. Thank you very much, media. Oma Wogu has signed each copy of your book already, but if you still want her to take a picture with you, uh, probably show she's signing your book for social media purposes, after the event, you'll just be outside or somewhere in the room with this to sign your book, and then you can make a video of she's signing your book. Thank you so much. All right, we're moving over to our very first panel session for today. And then we will move on from there. Okay. All right. Can we have our seats already? Thank you very much. And then we can take this back so that I can have a panel session for today. And we have four panelists on this particular panel session with a moderator who will be doing justice to the conversation that we are about to have. And uh, the people on this panel session are very powerful people. They are voices in their respective industries that they are in. Uh, on this panel session, we're going to be having Abolaji Adiola. We're going to be having, yeah, I forgot him. Oh, come for fire walked in when we were having, so please, can we please make some noise and show some love to Ife MOJ? Yes, so we're also going to be having Miss Teki and Flourish Ubayi on this particular panel session whilst they get that ready. I won't be moderating the panel session. I will be handing over to someone who is going to do justice to that. Um, Abolaji Adiola is representing the government uh, mountain. We have Ife Emoji representing the entertainment mountain, Miss Teki representing technology, of course, and Flori Shubai will be representing the media mountain. And 
and they will be doing justice, having conversations um, and answering many of the questions that might be on your mind when it comes to fulfilling God's purpose in your respective industries and shining your light in whatever uh, mountain it is that you represent, all right? So I will be calling up the moderator who will then receive her panelists. So at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I hand over to Favor Ige. A round of applause for Favor, please. Thank you so much, Gloria. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. We're in for a great time. I hope we're not tired. Maybe you shake a little on your seat or you nod your neighbor. Don't be tired. You can do better. Don't be tired. All right. Right now, we will be having the panelists join us. As I invite them, please, with a warm ovation, kindly encourage them as they come up with me. Abolaji Adeola, please let's give him a round of applause. He is a government official who serves as Deputy Speaker of the Leg Legislative House. He's a pastor, a teacher, an actor, and a politician. Please give him another round of applause. Thank you so much. Next, we'll be having Flo Flourish Bangi. A round of applause for her. She is the convener of the Shiny Light Show, a YouTube show that interviews Christian influencers. You should check it out. She's also a journalist. Thank you. Another round of applause, please. Next, we have Miss Techie, Toby Ayening. She's an outstanding tech blogger in Nigeria with amazing content on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, shining a light even in this world. We have Ife Emoji. Ife Olua Ogundeko is the popular artist who wrote the song Ayo and the popular song Omo Baba, he produced it as well. Please let's give them a round of applause, a warm ovation. All right, thank you so much. Please, maybe just say hello to your mic to ensure that. Hello. 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 All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we will be starting with something really warm so that everybody's on track. We want to know, at what point in your career did you find out that I want to be bigger than this? I'm not just doing this on a local scale. We'll be starting with you, Mr. Diola. What point in your life did you know that, ah, it's not just a local champion I want to be. I want to be more than this. Okay, uh, for what part? Is it the government part or uh, what part exactly? You see, you see why they are on this panel. Okay, let's start with, you started with acting. Let's start with acting. Okay, acting. I think the, the side for acting is, um, okay, this is, a, this is a guardian of believers. So right from when I was young, um, before um, getting into secondary school, I would always tell my parents that I want to be like Pastor E. Adeboe. I want to be like Pastor E. Adeboe. And um, everyone felt, oh, you would just be a pastor in future. You would serve God and all of that. And they used to call me pastor. And when I got into secondary school, I attended the best secondary school in Nigeria, Igomi College. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and when I got into secondary school, you know that you join the bad boys now. And you know, on Twitter, you know, I'm pastor to the bad boys now. Um, and um, that, that dream kind of changed. But I remember I wrote that on the wall in my room until today. That it's still there on the wall in my dad's house. And I want to be like Pastor E. Adeboe. And fast forward to university. We joined bad people, but we came back. God found us. And uh, long, that's a long story. Don't worry. And um, getting out of university, I wanted to jack bar, but God just held me down by his own um, command and everything. So I became a pastor. I relocated to redemption camp. I started working with Pastor Yadibuye, so I felt, oh, um, prophecy fulfilled. I'm just like him. I handle his social media and all of that. Run. Uh, no, no, I don't. I need a team that handles his social media, so oh, they don't for his record there. That no. And um, I thought that was it. That was prophecy fulfilled. So, um, um, that Mike Bamloe just reached out to us 
last year and says he wants to do a movie for Pastor E. Adibo to celebrate his 80th, and they need someone that looks like him, that walks like him, that understands. I said, ah, God will provide for you. But the guy, the guy was like, you actually have some traits, and I've never, I've never acted before, and so that was how I moved into. Um, it's my wife that does all the social media skits and all of that, but to the glory of God, um, that's where we Thank are. you so much for sharing that. Please, uh, let's kind of hurry it up so that we can attend so many questions. Thank you so much for that. Please, Ms. Fl Ms. Flourish, please go ahead. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so everybody knows, uh, like, people know me from the Shining Light show, but I actually am a journalist, and I um, am the uh, bureau chief of the West Africa office for Deutsche Welle, Deutsche Welle is Germany's international broadcaster, just like BBC, but for Germany. So I head the West Africa office. And um, the question was, how did I know I wanted to do something international? Yes. So when I completed my master's program, God instructed me to come back to Nigeria. That was in 2016, I think, or 17. And so when I returned, I had this dream. I wanted to work for like a local uh, TV station, channels, TVCA. You, you, you know them, like there are not so many. So I wanted to work for one of them and like be on national TV and everything. And I tried applying for jobs. I even did um, a particular uh, screening, but I wasn't accepted. And I was wondering, God, what's going on? Like, you know, um, just for context, I came back around like August, okay. and this was like September, October. So it wasn't very long, maybe like two, three months. And somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit inspired me to change my LinkedIn bio from freelance journalist to international journalist. And I did that. And honestly, that one thing, like I had an encounter with God that shifted my mindset from just looking at just my local vicinity to looking at like global impact, right? So I did that and like, I, I don't remember the time frame now. Shortly after, somebody sent me an email that CNN was launching in Nigeria. And that was literally my first job. Like I was an intern there for a few months then I started freelancing. And all the freelance jobs I did, I never worked for a Nigerian company. Like, till today, nobody has paid me Naira for my work. International journalist. So I did that, and then, you know, somewhere along the line, somebody said DW was trying to expand in Nigeria, in Africa, and um, they were looking for somebody. I had, like, breakfast with the person, joined the team, and from there, like, by the grace of God, you know, I've gotten to where I am now. So that's my short story. Thank you so much, Flourish Ibrahim. <laughs> Ms. Teki, okay, we are not going to be answering the same question. Okay. But we would still like to know, how did you break in? How did you know that you want to stand out in this tech well saturated by men, tech industry well saturated by men? That was way earlier in 2015. It's not as popular as now. What made you decide that I want to take this step? Okay, actually, two things, right? The first thing, I was working at my 95, and I, I was in charge of, the business is, is, was an agency at that time, and I was in charge of sourcing for influencers. And I'm like, okay, God, why can't I do something like this? Why can't I create a tech blog that is slightly different? But I didn't want to do it. I'm, I'm not the type of person that likes... I, I used to tell my friend that if it's not because of what I do, I'll probably not be on social media. Like, I'm not the social media type of person, right? But I told God, and I remember I said a particular prayer. It was a licorice song, background. I told God that, God, I'm about to start this thing, right? But I don't want to take the center stage. In as much as I'm the one going to be at the forefront, I want you to take the front role, and I'd rather take the background. This was as far back as 2015. And I always flash back to that prayer because... My, the person that was working with me then said, ah, Toby, you want to start tech blogging? It's going to take two years before you blow. And I looked, I'm, I looked at him like, oh, are you serious? Fine. And do you know that within two months, yeah. I got my first major deal from a brand. 
never been heard of. I think we should clap. Right? So, we should clap. Uh, in my, in looking back now, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think that prayer really helped me, right, stand out and start off with a bang. All right, thank you so much. If I'm, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a picture of you on Facebook from exactly th- 10 years ago of you playing the keyboard. We want to know, how did you move from playing keyboard with your white shirt and tie <laughs> in church to where you are right now? Please mm. give us all the details. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, all the details. Hmm. <laughs> okay, but I'll make it real quick. Um, True, I started off as a piano player, no, drums. I was playing the drums. Um, then, I'm a pastor's kid, so if you're in RCCG, there's no way that your father is a pastor, and you won't, by force, you have to learn how to play the drums. You have to do something. So that's how I started. I transitioned from drums to piano, to bass guitar, to talking drum, to the sax. But um, as time went by, then I got into Unilag, any alumni, alumnus? <laughs> um, and it happened, I started to you know, teach how to sing. Because I think music was really much like an hobby to me then, at first. You get just an hobby. By the time I got into Unilag, um, I met other like minds. Um, I started to direct choirs, you know, teach people how to sing. This is how to. Then I, you know. You know, there's this thing, they say, when your gift um, starts to find expression. I think when I got into um, university, my gift started to find an expression. Then, um, you know, I knew how it should sound. Do you get You just know that it should sound this way. So fast forward to that period. I wasn't really singing then, but, I mean, I was a worshiper at heart, and... Um, I can still sing and lead worship, but not, you know, I didn't see myself as an artist. Um, fast forward, after that time, um, between when I was meant to go for NYC and um, when I finished from school, I started to write songs. Um, back to back, I was writing, and those songs made sense, actually. But the first one I wrote, nobody was here, it's so bad. But all the songs actually started making so much sense. Um, I ha- and one thing I was going to say is I remember vividly that um, before coming to this event, the Holy Spirit kept you know, reminding me of the fact that in everything I will say today, I should always point out the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, I think it's Jeremiah 10, 12, uh, 10 verse 23, I think. It says, Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. So all through my journey, by the time I started to write, the Holy Spirit impressed it in my heart already that, bro, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, there's a way the Holy Spirit talks to me, so he might not tell you, bro. So, but it is time, you know, for you to do this, and it's going to be global. So it just stopped there, but I didn't really see that something, um, you know, I just held on to the word. I think 2019, I was told that um, Fela Dorito was going to run for election and all that, and they needed someone to, you know, write the campaign song, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they said, okay, you know what, let's make it a competition, blah, 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 things like that. I wrote it. Mine was the best. They used it. Everyone loved the song then, even if you didn't win, but everyone loved the song. <laughs> but, um, interestingly, I think the reception motivated me, I won't lie to you. The reception motivated me. Um, you know, after all those periods, um, you know, God also spoke to me about releasing Ayo. I think that was where it, you know, something really happened. I wasn't meant to release Ayo first. My first song was meant to be titled Almighty God. It's a different song. So I had, had, I had an event, invited a whole lot of people. Great. Yeah. And at that event, I did about six songs or seven songs. That event was also based on God's instruction because releasing a song or, you know, performing songs that you've not released is dangerous. Do you get? So I did that with, you know, just obeying God. And, you know, when you come for an event and there's a take-home song, Ayo was that song. And that was how, you know, the journey started. Thank you so much. Mr. Teki, we're back to you. Between 2015, when you decided that okay, I want to open a blog, I want to start the blog, a tech blog. What major two things stood out for you that helped you in your journey? Um, so for me, it was 
the thing that made me stand out in what I did was my uniqueness, right? I didn't want to be like others, right? Everybody had a tech blog then. Everybody was doing serious tech blogging. But I knew that in order to stand out, I had to be different. I had to come in and fill a gap that um, nobody has filled yet. So that was one of the things that made me stand out um, with what I did back then. So my blog then wasn't, my tech blog then wasn't serious. As a matter of fact, I got trolled because of that. Like the guys, the tech guys then didn't take me seriously because they were like, who is this one coming to um, dilute tech? according to them. But I didn't see the picture that I was seeing or the vision that I was seeing at that time. So um, the fact that I was unique made me stand out. Maybe the second one is um, I always related back to God. Like for everything I do, for every step I take, right? Even now, right? Because now there's a lot of noise. Everybody's now on social media. And it's even difficult now to stand out ever than before, right? But I still always find a way to relate it back to God. Last week, I had a slight issue. I was tired. I was burnt out, right? And I didn't want to create anymore. Like, I was not, like, anymore, but I didn't want to create for that week. But then I went to meet God, and a song, I don't know whoever experiences this. You are sleeping. Maybe you have a problem. And you're sleeping, and you wake up, and a song is in your head. Yeah. And that song was, um, oh, I can't remember now. But um, it was such a powerful song, and I had to go on YouTube to search it. And that was what just made me change my perception about how I felt at that time. So God has always been a huge deal. Without God, I don't think I'll be where I am right now. All right, thank you so much. Let's flourish of buying. Yes, we'd like to know, when you decided that you started with um, CNN Nigeria and then you made w, um, DW, where you were also, you also freelanced, when you decided to start the Shining Light show, how did the divine intervention play in? Okay, so the idea for the Shining Light show has always been, like, I, I thought it was just, like, in my head. But the other day, I was speaking to my husband, and he was like, ah, you always talk about this thing, that you are going to do it. Like, you've always talked about it for many years. Um, my fellow CU people here, hello. <laughs> Um, please, other people, don't be angry. We are like that. So, um, in CU, I actually uh, also, you know, hosted a panel uh, once because I was in student council, and then we hosted a panel, and, you know, people that wanted to commit suicide, they came to meet me. They were like, you know, before this, I wanted to do this, and now. So, I could see the, the impact of conversations, right? It has always been a God thing. It's not like when did God come in. It has always been a God thing. Like for me, I, like, I've never really shared this, but like uh, I could just be sitting down with you, for example, or with somebody, or even just sitting down listening to a message, and I begin to see myself like asking them questions, sitting down interviewing them. So I believe that that is a, you know, the shining light show has always been a seed that God put in my spirit for a very, very long time. It was just a matter of time, right? So, uh, it's very hard to really trace, like, the beginning of it, you know. But I would say that it was a thing of, first of all, God giving me the vision and also the timing and, like, making everything align for me to, you know, be able to do it at the time when I started and by the grace of God, like how far it has gone. Thank you so much for Shubani. I'd like us to take note of things that they are saying. I hope we're taking written notes of these things. She has made mention of how it has been in our hearts, but timing, timing, the time factor, I'd like us to pay attention to it. As we move on, we'd like to ask you, Bolaji, about, particularly about governance. You've made mention to acting and how it began for you. Governors, what steps did you take? Some of us are here and then God has put it in our mind to go into politics, governors, and it's not something very popular amongst believers. We would rather leave politics since it's a dirty game. So what steps have you taken that has helped you in your career for believers that would like to walk in this line as well? Okay, um, for me, yeah, and I don't, it's only, it seems only covenants people that are here. Um, Babcock, are you here? <laughs> Babcock, ah, yes, you are here. Run, run. Ah, nobody's run. It's fine. Run. Ah, Emmanuel, run now. Uh -huh. We are here. I had my MBA run. Unilag. Uh -huh. So, it's not only covered that. Oh, 
Oh, you, oh, you people, they'll start singing that their song now. That, that they are, oh, you are dead. Well, it's fine. Um, it's, so for me, governance, um, I see all mountains of influence. You know, I listen to, I try to be quiet. I try, I try, I always try. But they will just force people like us to say some things. And because of where I work, which is the church, I, I, mean, I tell people that I'm a church boy. Though I don't collect salary from the church, it's God that pays me salary. I see all of the mountains of influence as the mountains that should be under Mount Zion, which is the mountain of God. Then the Bible tells us, I said this in Shani Light Show, everybody, almost everybody here have had um, inter- only mistake, but I go to your page sometimes to just imagine how those things are really edited. And um, Ife was the one that produced Omar Baba for us. Omar Baba was done in church. We did it in church. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me that this song was going to go global. And the choir coordinator is um, first friend. And from there, and before you knew, we had Omar Baba experience um, Muson, which was really big at the glory of God. And for me, all of these mountains are on that mountain of God. The Bible says there in Micah, it says that there will be a day that all these mountains will come to the mountain of God. So now we ask, what is the mountain of God? Bible says in Psalm 24, it says that we shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord. And the Bible also tells us, it says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness, and there shall be deliverance, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Stay with me. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, it says, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, all those amazing things. And he said what? The government will be where? Upon his shoulder. And if God dwells in Mount Zion, if he says the highest dwells in his holy hill, it means that God dwells in Mount Zion. And if the government is upon his shoulder, that means that is the is the mountain of government that you are so exalted above all other mountains because the government controls everything around. So first, I have to start with all other mountains. So if it's um, art and entertainment, at least we do that in the church. We do that in some levels that at least we, do, we cannot share in the background in Christianity in Nigeria. Uh, maybe it's, um, which one is there again? Uh, ministry. Yeah, I'm like one of the youngest zonal pastors in RCCG in Nigeria. And a lot of family, I was intentional about marrying my wife because I'm a manager myself. And I had to open an Instagram page for my son too, as small as he's just three months old, so that uh, the family side is taken care of. Business, we run business, um, whatever. But the mountain of governance, and this is where, and I hope this will not be taken out of context, Please, I want to beg. Because I remember um, a lot of people went to my interview on Shining Light, and some people were like, oh, this is nice. And some people were just bashing me. I'm like, it doesn't concern you. We said it is the truth that we said. And my father in law, Pastor Yadibu, he says, he wants to, sorry, I'm a church boy. Please feel free. He says he wants to build the auditorium the size of a badon, 60 kilometers by 60 kilometers. The present auditorium we have now is 3 kilometers by 3 kilometers. The former one is one kilometer by almost one kilometer. And 60 kilometer by 60 kilometer is the size of Ibadan. That's the size of Ibadan. For those of you that attend RCCG, you have heard him say it, that it wants to be the size of Ibadan. And presently, the distance from Bega to the Redemption City, I live on the Redemption Camp. That's where my house is, my family is. The distance from Bega to Redemption Camp, we say kilometer 42, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. So that is the distance from Bega to Redemption Camp, 42 kilometers. Now, someone says he wants to build an auditorium that size, length and breadth, 60 kilometers. Now, if you're talking about 60 kilometers, that's all the way to Shagam Interchange or Ogere. I want to build an auditorium that size. That's auditorium. We are not talking of the car parks and all of those things. And I said to myself, no matter how much this man has, he cannot buy this land anywhere. It is only the government that would give you such a land to build such an edifice. So until some of us now go and start from the smallest unit, so that by the time that prophecy 
will come to pass. We would have resources, we would have finance, we would have the family, we would have people like Ife that will come and sing in your auditorium. We have people like, we, like, we have everybody here. So that on that day, the mountains, these small mountains, will come to the mountain of God's house. So, all the things that we are doing now, whether in government, I, I, just, I, went, I won the election, I was never a part of a political party or anything. But when I won the election and everything, I, it was God. It was obvious that it was God because I was not a member of the political party. You people don't like the party. I was not, uh, I, I, did, I didn't attend their meetings or anything. I just told my boss, oh, pa- um, he's, he's dead now, he's resting, that's Pastor Dario Adeboe. I told him, I said, Pastor Dario, it was during COVID. Because during COVID that time, what we felt like influence was, so let me just cast myself small. We, when we had uh, answers okay. on Sunday, of the second week. Well, on, on Friday, people posted on, Pastor, Reverend Samadiyomi posted on Twitter and was like, ah, he supported the answers, Sha. That was his tweet. And people were like, ah, we're going to, it's Reverend Samadiyomi that we're going to watch at Togate. Me, I'm like, ah, me, I have a father now and my father is one of the most influential men in the world, one of the most Christians. I like Reverend Samadiyomi, like one of my mentors, my guy. But I have Pastor here, they bring it too. So I, say, I just call a few of my guys. I say, okay, let us organize Sunday service in Alausa. So we were behind. We brought all the apparatus. We brought all the screens, all the speakers. I called Pastor Kulia Jai, called Wuli Awole, called Bidi Melaoba, everybody. We did not call. Ah, I need to. So we organized the Sunday service and we did it there. So I thought that was it. But we had to now move, now translate that action into something that was tangible. Then we now have to. We now understood that we need government for us to allow kingdom to come on earth. Thank you very much. So profound. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll go back to you, Flori Shubain. What do you think about people who prioritize faith over diligence and having value in their fields? Hmm. Okay. So I think there's a difference between religion and spirituality, right? And in fact, there is what the Bible calls true religion. And the Bible also talks about, you know, examine yourself if you are truly in the faith, right? That means it's possible for you to be doing something that you think is authentic, but it's actually a copy. It's actually a counterfeit. Honestly, it is impossible for you to walk with God truly, Truly, yo, <laughs> and not be relevant is not possible. If you are truly working with God, you know, that's why uh, many years back I was telling somebody that, uh, who said it? I think it was Dr. Foy that said something about arguments. The person was coming to me asking me about one doctrine or the other. I was like, please, I don't even like to talk about all these things because your results, like, um, my brother said earlier, is what the world respects, right? And honestly, if you, if you are truly walking with God, truly walking with God, your life will have fruits. And you will have impact. And you will see results. This is not even you setting out to make impact or setting out to produce something. It's just natural. It's just natural. Now, let me give you an example when we started the Shining Light show, like I said, I already had the idea for a very long time, and God, I got the signal that it was time to start. Um, I never for one second thought, how many views are we going to get? Who is going to watch it? You know, it was just, let me just do this thing that is in my heart. Because each time I pray, when I worship, that's the vision that keeps coming to me. So again, like intimacy with God. And God kept showing me this thing. So I started, it's a long story and like so many testimonies behind even the making of the show before, you know, it came out. Like I said, I never for once thought who is going to watch it. On my Instagram, I had, as of the day I published it, I think I had like 2,000 followers. And I was just like, okay, maybe if, I, I didn't even think about who will watch it, right? And I started editing, I edited everything myself. 
and you know, I reached out to people, I reached out to Pastor Bolaji, reached out to Dr. Foy. Again, like looking at it on the surface, this is just a random girl, right? But I was being led. And the person that was leading me was sponsoring me and going ahead of me. And you know, the way the Bible talks about how, like, the footsteps of the lepers, like, God make it, made it sound like soldiers, like an army. That's what God did for us. You know, it was just like a small girl, but like, God was projecting me to be bigger than what I actually was, right? And by the special grace of God, between November, like in eight months that we've launched, we have like over 12,000 subscribers on YouTube. Just give a round we've had of like millions of views. Now, I just want to say that the emphasis is not on people clicking on your content or liking what you say, liking what you have to say or whatever, right? Because uh, first of all, even getting people to watch and getting those views is God. That's the first thing. So I don't want to underplay that. Like, it's actually God. Um, the Bible speaking, it says that, uh, uh, speaking about Jesus, that his fame spread abroad. The Bible speaking, speaking about when the apostles were gathered in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came, a sound was released and people gathered from all over Jerusalem. So even, like, growing your influ influence, spreading your influence, can is spiritual. Yes. There are physical strategies, yeah. but like my brother said, you can sleep and wake up and your life will be completely different mm -hmm. if you are sponsored by the Spirit, Spirit of, God. of God. So, um, back to my testimony. Like, we've had so many clicks and views and I give God all the glory for that. But the testimonies, like the transformation that has come from just this little act of obedience, you know, I call it little because it's something that you could have just said, I don't need this. Like, I have a job. I don't even like social media. I don't, like, I'm comfortable. You know, I'm good by myself. But as a result of my walk with God and my intimacy with the Spirit of God, he began to open things up to me and, you know, reveal things to me. And I just obeyed and walked with it. And then the world is being blessed. People are being blessed by it. And this is just the beginning, right? So your faith and your, what, what else did you call the it? value you are giving out. It cannot, you can't separate it. You cannot truly be a person of faith and not be a person of value. Thank you so much, Flourish. Ms. Teki, you made mention earlier about the discouragement you felt when you started and how you were having a lot of backlash. Please, can you tell us, there are so many of us that have started and, you know, easily they'll just say all those Christians and things like that. How have you forged ahead, notwithstanding the discouragement and the backlash? Um, I think having mentors is one of the biggest things that, have, that has happened to me at, um, at the beginning of my journey, right? Because I wanted to quit. I wanted to stop my blog because the people that I held in high regard went on Twitter and they were part of the people bashing me. And these are people that I respect in the tech industry. So imagine people that like you know no more than you are bashing you, so I'm like, maybe I'm not cut out for this thing, right? But then um, I got someone to tell me something really significant that changed that, and that's why the value of mentors or the value of having people to talk to, like you're not an island. No man is an island. You need people in your corner either to encourage you or to push you further, right? And the person said, for these people to be talking about you means you're doing something great. Mm -hmm. They sat down and they are talking about you. Do you even know them even before this thing? So that just changed the um, mindset I had towards them. So if I were to advise anyone coming up that is being discouraged, I'll say speak to someone. It could even be a pastor. It could be literally anybody. And of course, God is the first person you have to speak to about it as well. And after that, look for someone else um, to um, talk to. And the second thing that really encouraged me was this scripture, yeah? Um, there's a particular passage. Anytime I'm working hard, if I'm working at either I'm doing, um, maybe I'm not sleeping and I'm editing a video, I always say this in my mind, right? See as thou a man that is diligent in his work, he shall stand before kings and not mere man, right? I say that word every time. Like, it's like, I'm sure God is tired of that word from me, Seth, right? And the reason why I say that word is because, and the beauty about that word is, regardless of whether or not you're a Christian, that word is supposed to work for you, right? A man, not a Christian. So it could apply to anybody. As far as you're diligent in your work, you shall, you shall stand before kings and no mere man. So 
that word is my mantra, right? I speak that word whenever I'm doing something significant, and I tell God indirectly that, God, you see what I'm doing, though? I'm working on this thing. I'm being discouraged. Please help me, because you know I put in so much work, right? So those two things, having mentors and finding a way to encourage yourself, either with the word or with messages. All right, thank you so much. If I'm OG, yes, I made mention of <laughs> you playing keyboard on Facebook. Now you're a producer. There's a video of you on your YouTube channel showing us how you produced the Omobaba song. Now, how did you upskill? You could have just stayed continuing playing keyboard or drums. How did you upskill from just playing keyboards to producing music? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, like I've always said, um, I've always been a man under instruction. So, I've, I think before I even started making music for others, um, or producing music. I was in certain bands. I served you know, other artists, some artists you know and you might not know. In fact, I was playing music for them. I wasn't even really ready to do my thing then, you know, not even as an artist or so. Then I think, I think that was 2019 or 18, I, I'm not really sure. And you know, God, I was also teaching also, I was teaching people how to you know, make music. Um, I think 2019, and God told me that I had to put all that aside. So I left. It was hard, though, because of the relationship I you know, built with most of the people I was working with then. I was a piano player for this one, maybe music director for this one, something like that. Yeah. So I had to like put all those bands and crew at a pause. So I went ahead to... Um, well, I'd always known that I would produce music, but I didn't know when. So, and one beautiful thing is once God gives you an instruction, you know, and you begin to yield, the vision gets clearer. Do you get? So, um, everything started to, you know, put itself in place. I met someone, you know, who's currently my manager. He could produce music, uh, but he was struggling with producing music. Very, very interesting story. And by the time I met him, he knew all the technical know-how. But, you know, the aspect of being creative was difficult. So I met him then. So he taught me all the technical know-how. Do you get? Um, and I'm creative. So I taught him that other aspect that this is how to play. This is how to do this. This is how to do that. Um, with time, we started to make music. Then I was, I was making secular music. <laughs> then we started to make music. Um, with time, it, it began to... Um, become something really, really beautiful. Though you know that first process of you creating and it doesn't make sense, it happens. I, I think I need to just hammer that too. You might, when you transition into something new, I don't think you should really expect that, you know, something really beautiful, amazing will come out from it at first. You get, but you have to keep going, like keep trying, keep trying. And with time, I started to become more confident about producing music. And to God be the glory, we are still we are progressing. We're not okay. there yet, but we're progressing. Thank you so much for sharing that. If I'm still on you, it's popular that most times music art, um, gospel music artists, yeah. they have an issue with finances. Most times, people have back and forth, yes, on Twitter, that why would they ask for money? Why would they want to be charged for, you are coming to do God a service free of charge? How have you managed dealing with finances and um, sponsorships? Okay, um, interestingly, I think for me, hmm, the process of, I think I, I, I won't say I was really making or I'm making music from being a Christian artist per se. Now, watch this. When God told me to go learn how to produce music, I didn't know it was going to be a source of living. Do you get? So producing music for me has been like much more, you know, sufficient than me being an artist. Those are like two different things. So if I'm going to come into your church to actually minister, I might not really, you know, care. You pay me, but I might not really care about, you know, how large or how slim the honorarium might yes. be. So also, you see, I mean. This is also why people advise, you know, Christian artists to also, like, diversify, do you get, 
it's good that you get paid in church and all that, but it's also good that there are other things I do aside from even music entirely. But it's also very, very, very good that you diversify. I produce music. I also write music for others then get my royalties too. So I won't have to wait that uh, RCCG LP14 is calling me. How much will they pay me? So that's just it, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Ife. Miss Teki, please, as we're rounding up, what advice would you like to give younger believers that, yes, are in the tech space, but also want to shine on a global scale? I feel that we have the creative power of God in us, and technology is about creating something new. I mean, if God's creative power is in us, there's literally nothing we can do. And I think that has even helped me. If you look at my videos, my videos are slightly different from the regular tech videos, like, right? And that is intentional. And every now and then, God has shown himself. There are sometimes I would sleep, maybe there's an idea, I have a brief in my head, and no ideas come into my mind, and I would get like a picture of what I'm supposed to do, right? So if God created the universe, that creative power is in us, us, right? And we can do so much with that gift, with that creative power. So just pray about it, um, think about it, also do your research. You can do it. Like anybody here, if you're looking to jump into tech, either with regards to creating a software or even in the content space, you have you, the ability to do it. You can do it. Thank you so much. In just one minute, Flory, please help us. What advice would you like to give upcoming journalists, people in the media, on becoming on a global scale, shining our lights? Okay, so the first thing is, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay. Be so good that you cannot be ignored. Mm. Like, that's, again, I can only talk about what I know, right? Okay. If you watch The Shining Light Show, I don't really talk much, right? But the video is speaking for, it, for itself, mm. right? Videos are speaking for themselves because there is a level of excellence that must be, like, like that, that people must see. And that will, first of all, even catch your attention before you listen to what is in, in the video. So, like, I, I am almost obsessed with the idea of being, like, super good that you'll be shocked. You know, initially, you may look at me and be like, eh, fine girl, she doesn't really have much to offer. But by the time I actually show you my work, you know, you will, every argument will be silenced. You know, so shock people with how good you are. That's the first thing. Then secondly, everything that you hear in church, do it. Listen to the voice of God. Study your Bible. Pray. Like, it's simple. And, you know, that's the way God deals with me. When, whenever there's, a, there's an issue, there's something I want to learn, I'm like, God, what's the basis? Like, what's the cocoa of the matter? The basis is read your Bible, pray every day, grow spiritually, and you will see the fruits in your life, in your work, in your family. The results will be there. Like, it's not, it's not something that, like, don't seek the results. Seek to become somebody. Become a certain type of person. Become the kind of person that is led by the Spirit of God. Become a, the, the kind of person that is excellent. Become the kind of person that is, like, intentional, passionate, about living out the scriptures, not just praying. That's one thing that, like, especially when it comes to the real world okay. that annoys people when you are, like, speaking in tongues, doing all these things, but there is no fruit. There is no result. Do you understand? Like, if God can create the universe, if God can give us, like, all these ideas, Dr. Foy said on my show, like, the speaker microphone, things are adding value, they're advancing us as a civilization. Yes. They existed in God, or, and they've always existed. So it's our responsibility to draw it out. And how do you do that? By, by being truly spiritual. Mm. So I think I'll just end Thank it. you so much. Um, before we go, please, what encouragement would you like to give believers that are here, that are shying away from governance and politics? Okay, um, well, it's, uh, it's basic. For the sake of yourself, for the sake of your children, and for the sake of your generation, um, if um, everything I do is rooted in scripture, me, I'm the Bible, like, I don't know Bible, but I'm a church boy, so everything I do about my life 
Um, and I always tell people, if God gives you, someone asks the question about purpose, um, if you discover, or maybe I don't know the word, if you find or you think or you get inspiration for purpose, if you cannot find it around scripture, you have to check again. Even Jesus himself, he had to go and quote Isaiah chapter 61. When they asked him, he said, ah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've come to set the captives free, to heal the sick and all of that. So everything about governance for me, scripture, I look at the life of Daniel. I look at the life of David. David was a whole rounder. David was a, uh, was a king. He was a priest. He was a psalmist. He was a warrior. He was a creative guy. He was in a choir. He was, he was everything. Look at the life of Daniel. Daniel served about three kings. And Daniel was still a priest and a king. Daniel, they could not throw him anywhere. They, one, uh, one of the kings had issues. And the mother said, there is a guy that is the spirit of the holy gods. So these people, the people of the world, they know, they know the holy gods. They know the holy spirit. And they, they, they understand that you have the holy spirit. So, and um, as I close, I would just like to ask you guys. When you are born, the government issues you a what? A birth certificate. When you get into primary school, the government, when you are about leaving primary school, for those of us that would um, come on entrance, wanted to enter King, King's College, all those schools that year, it's the government that would issue the common ed first school living certificate. When you get into GSS um, 3, GSS 1, 2, 3, the biggest scam of exams in this world, Junior Waek, they will tell you that if you don't pass Junior Waek, you don't get, it's still the government that issues that exam. When you are done, or almost done, if you want to do fast track, SS2, you go and do GCE, it's the government that is still in charge of GCE. When you are in SS3, the government is in charge of Waek, the government is in charge of NECO, and if they now like, they will now jam you again. It's the government that sits on jam. When you are done with that one, you get it to university, regardless, I've attended three universities in my life, no four now, self. Regardless, it's the government that is in charge, whether private, uh, missionary, whatever kind of university, yeah. the government is in charge of getting that jam for you to, when you are now done with university, regardless of how much you pray, covenant people, regardless of, regardless of, wait, I know I'm beefing covenant people, but it's fine, it's fine, I'm not beefing them. Regardless of how much you paid in covenant, regardless of how you perform ego and all of those things. Now, wait, 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 wait. Now, they have to do election in Canada. Alumni, um, in Canada. I'm like, what's wrong with you people? And regardless of how much you pay, you want to do ego or whatever in your university, when you are done, you still go and serve the government. When you're not finished serving the government, you find a fine woman like my wife, no, You are not... You are not married until the government says you are married by issuing you a marriage certificate. See, people of God, when you have a child, just like my handsome child as well, the child, I, the child cannot leave this country until he has a passport issued by who? The government. And he needs a birth certificate issued by who? The but when you now die, when they're not going to claim your pension, the government will still issue you something called what? Thank you very much. I think with this few points of yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adeola, Bola, Jim Flourish, Ubayim, Miss Teki, Efe, Emuj. Okay? Just a second, please. Yes, yeah, just a second. Yeah. I wanted to add to, I think um, you said, um, for those who are in the faith and they can't balance, you know, with um, their work and all, output and all that. So I wanted to say that um, God does not prohibit achievers, you know, so, if you are in the faith and you actually do all what the faith truly says you do, you won't be lagging. You know, you won't be slothful in business. And um, one last thing, Daniel is an example. Joseph is an example. Go study it. Yeah. Thank you Sorry. so much. Sorry, I wanted to add something as well. Uh, and this is a job to you. Um, <laughs> As an ego, I just, something came to me. <laughs> so a, a word came to me, and I think I just have to say it. Maybe it was God that put it in my mind. Papa said something that I caught. Yes, yes. So he said, do not seek to be known, but seek to know. Because when you know, people will seek to know you. He said that, and it was so profound. So yeah, I just had to say that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. We really appreciate how you've poured out your hearts to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Igu, Igu. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for that insightful. How was the panel session? Talk to me. Yes, on point. Thank you so much. Okay, we have awards to present. Miss Teki, please, can we have you up on stage? Thank you. A round of applause for Miss Teki, please. Congratulations, Tovi. Thank you so much. We just want to thank you for doing a lot in the media sector. Your videos are a lot. Keep shining your light. Thank you so much, Tovi. Thank you. Daddy Jubilee. Please, can we have you? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Government is a very, is a good sector. Thank you for actually representing God in the government and politics sector. We pray that your light never go dim. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Please, can we have Flourish? Ooh, the shining light. Flourish, thank you. First of all, thank you for coming. I know how busy you are. Thank you for shining your light in the media sector. We pray that your light will never go dim. Call me for fire, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ife. Your song has been a blessing to me. When I sent you an invite, I never knew you would, you would accept. But God gave me your name and I reached out. And it's just a testament that he actually instructed this conference. Thank you for representing God in the entertainment sector. May your light never go dim. Thank you so much. Thank you to our panelists. We have one more panel session to go. So we do not want you to be in a rush at all. But before that panel session, we're going to have a light worship session by Yemi Levite. Right after uh, Funto Iboye will be ministering to us and then we'll have our panel session finally. So just for about three minutes, let's just um, have Yemi Levite right now. So Yemi Levite let us know that the song is about to perform was just given to him now. So, he, yeah, yeah, God actually just dropped it in his spirit now and he's going to just give us a short interlude right after I will be bringing up our final uh, keynote speaker for today. Hello, shining lights. Um, so this, as I came in here, I was trying to set up, and this was the song that came to my head. It just dropped in my heart. Okay. It says, uh, was the use of light in the midst of light outshine in the midst of darkness? Was the use of light in the midst of light outshine in darkest places? I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. So we're going to sing this song together. I'm also just learning it. So can we just try? Everybody. I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. I am the light. 
I'll shine my light to the world. Can I hear you? I am the light. I'll shine my light to the world. I am the light. Now the energy has dropped, or is it me or something is happening? Can we celebrate Jesus? Yes, I wanted the energy to be on a hundred just the way we started in the morning. Okay, we're about to have a very important session now. And it's with a woman I have come to respect, to honor, and to love personally. She has been a blessing to my life, to my journey. I mean, I watch her videos, I listen to our ministrations, and personally, my life has just been, has been changed. Um, I, I've, I have the gift of access to it to an extent, and it's one that I cannot take for granted. I'm happy again to be under administration this afternoon. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the Light Conference 2023 Multimedia, are you there? Please help me with the profile of Funto Iboye. Funza Iboye is a dynamic individual who has achieved remarkable success in various domains. She is the CEO of 528, a renowned global firm that specializes in design, architecture, and property development. Funza is an alumnus of Covenant University, where she graduated with a degree in accounting in 2010, and then went on to attain her Chartered Accountant Certification in 2011. She has had a wealth of professional experience cutting across various industries, including working as an accountant, a brand manager for a multinational, and then setting up her own company, 528. Her exceptional contributions have garnered widespread recognition across notable platforms. In 2017, she was honored as one of the most inspiring women in Nigeria by Y Niger and Leading Ladies Africa. In 2020, Mogulets Africa celebrated her inclusion among the 100 most inspiring moguls. The Richer Woman Inc. further acknowledged her impact, naming her one of the 100 most impactful women in 2022. Beyond her role at 528, Funtor is the visionary force behind Recalibrate Academy, 
a faith-based business coaching initiative set up to raise kingdom-minded, profitable, and influential entrepreneurs who advance God's agenda in the marketplace. Through her books, coaching programs, and speaking engagements, Funto has touched the lives of numerous individuals globally. She is blissfully married to Akiade Iboye, also known as Gay's Baba, and they are blessed with three children. With a round of applause and a loud cheer, let's make welcome Funto Iboye. The Light Conference 2023 with Jesus Joy. Celebrate God's gift to us, Funto Iboye. Good afternoon, morning stars. Please, let's put our hands together for Oma. Thank you for obeying. No, that's, that's, not, that's not what I want. With a standing ovation, let's put our hands together for the one who has brought us together today. Thank you, Oma, for obeying God's call to do this. I mean, it's not an easy feat to organize a conference as excellent as this and to gather people here. So thank you for answering the call to do this. God bless you. Please sit down. Right. Um, I have just 15 minutes, right? And, you know, there's one scripture that is one of the anchor scripture of my life, and it's Psalm 27, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I love the message version. It says, light, space, zest. That's God. And with God on my side, I am fearless. Afraid of no one and afraid of nothing. I've been, you know, mandated to speak on the topic, a kingdom star on a mission. But we must understand as kingdom stars on a mission that there's a certain fearlessness that comes with knowing that God is your light. There's a certain boldness. You know, scripture also says that the righteous are as bold as the lion, right? And now more than ever before, there is a clarion call for righteous men and women to go boldly after the agenda of the Father in this time. We've talked about, you know, the agendas that are agending, the LBGTQ, the abortion agenda, you name it. They are fearlessly and boldly going after their agendas. So why are we shying back? Why are we sitting back? You know, they say, oh, don't, don't impose your Christianity on, on us, but they are imposing their LGBTQ on us. And so what are we going to do to that? Now God is calling us to arise because truly and truly, this is the time of Isaiah 60. It says, arise and shine for your light has come. Your light has come. And scripture also says that the light, you know, comes into darkness and the darkness does not understand it. The light comes into darkness and it dispels the darkness. So now more than ever before, we must be bold about what we carry. It's because we do not understand what we carry. That's why we're not bold. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of God. For it's the power of God unto salvation. People are looking for salvation. People need to be saved. And how is your light saving them? How are you in the marketplace drawing people out of the darkness into the kingdom of light? How are you as a fashion designer that people will come in contact with your clothes, that they will wear your clothes and skin diseases will be healed? That people will wear the wigs that you're selling and depression leaves their mind or tumor melts? That people will, you know, come, I, I, I work, you know, as an interior designer and I design spaces. So that's why I love the message version of Psalm 20 because it says light, space, zest. So I understand the spirituality behind spaces. And so we design spaces and we receive testimonies. Not, 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 not just testimonies that I say, oh, the client said, oh, you know, I designed my space and I love the colors. No. We designed a space for a couple who have been waiting for years to have the fruit of the womb. And, you know.
know, just randomly, I didn't even know they were waiting. Just randomly, I just said to the to them that oh they had it was a four bedroom they just bought this property four bedroom the person said oh let's just make one of the room the children's room because they had talked about all the spaces we had gone around you know and then they didn't say anything about children I said okay what about children and let's make a children's space right and I remember the wife you know just you know she just gave me this look like you know but I didn't I didn't understand that they were waiting anyway long and short we designed their space and that very year the wife took him <laughs> we designed a space for you know, a young lady, a studio apartment. And while I was in the market, you know, shopping for the decor items to, you know, put on a space, it was not in the plan to get a mirror. But the Holy Spirit said, get a mirror and put it in a particular space in the living room. We, I went ahead and did it. And, you know, two weeks after we delivered the space, she sends me a very long WhatsApp message on a Sunday morning. I was in church, I remember. And she said, for the first time, in her life, you know, for the first time in a long while, she had not taken the time to look at herself fully in the mirror. Why? Because four years prior to that time, she was gang raped. And so she hated to look at herself naked in the mirror. But on that Sunday, she took the step. She, was, she said she was going from the living room to the bathroom, and then she just saw the mirror and turned back. And went back and undressed herself and looked at herself fully in the mirror. And that was the beginning of her deliverance. Today she's married. Those are the solutions that the world is looking for. It's not time to play. And so the Holy Spirit speaks to me a lot in acronyms. And he has given me you know, an acronym for light. Which is what we must begin to understand as believers sent into the mountains of influence. So whatever mountain you have been called to, whether it's governance, it's heart and science, whatever it is, this applies to you. L stands for love. At the core of what you're sent to do, at the core of your mission is love. Because at the core of God's agenda is a love for the people. Scripture says that for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only son to die. So you cannot say that you're on an assignment for God and you don't love the very people that God died for. It must be love. Scripture says about Jesus in several places, it says Jesus moved by compassion, healed the blind. Moved by compassion, he, he, he healed the lame. Moved by compassion, he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. So what is driving you? Is it fame? Is it money? Or is it love? Because at a certain level, you must have empathy for people. And that empathy bets excellence. And on a certain level of excellence brings deliverance. You know, we just handed over a space to a client recently. And as we're doing the walkthrough, one of the things the clients, and this is a very prominent person. Like if I mention the person's name, everybody here knows, knows the person. But one of the things she kept saying as we were walking through all the spaces that we had renovated and redesigned was that she, she kept saying, I feel so much peace here. I feel so much peace here. Like, you know, she was saying it. She wasn't crying, but there were tears in her eyes as she was saying it. I feel so much peace here. So how can people come in contact with you or with your work or with your assignment or with your products and they experience God? It's because of love. Because that love drives you to want to deliver excellently. And that excellence brings deliverance. So whatever it is you're called to do, love must be the foundation. I, intimacy. We can't say that we are doing work for God and not be intimate with him. That's a lie. You know, the panelists have all shared it. They've all said from their different experiences of intimacy with God. Because it's in that place of intimacy we receive instructions. It's in that place of intimacy we receive insights. We receive secrets. How would I have known that this client, they did not have children and they were trusting God for children? It's because of secrets. It says the Lord reveals the, his secrets to those that he loves. And this is not the time for us to be, you know, I see a lot of things happening on social media. You receive one small revelation from God, and next thing, I'm going to post it online. For what? This is not the time to share what we receive in the secret place in the open. Because guess what? God does not deal with people who are not discreet. That's why it's called a secret place. And I see those of us who, because you want to show people that you're a prayer warrior, 
you will go and video yourself as you are praying. You cannot Instagram koinonia. You cannot Instagram true intimacy. Intimacy means, you know how scripture says of Adam, and Adam knew his wife. It's like, my husband knowing me. I don't video myself when I'm having sex with my husband. So why are we videoing ourselves when we are praying to God and being intimate with our father? This is the time to stop all that nonsense. We are not here for show. Because the people we are up against, they are not doing it for show. They are not doing it for Instagram. They are doing it to agend an agenda. This is not the time to play. So stop it. If you want to be intimate with God, and it's not five minutes prayer, I'm sorry to say. You don't become intimate with somebody by spending five minutes with them. It takes time to know God. It takes time to know anybody you really want to be close with. Even when you are married, even if you've been cutting for 10 years, when you marry, there are dimensions of the person that you never knew. So imagine how vast God is. And you think it's 10 minutes a day to mark register that will make you be intimate with him. You're joking. Because the people on the other side, they know what they are doing. Why are they waking up at 2 a.m. going to graveyards and dancing naked? You, you are sleeping. You are snoring. They play. They are not joking. We said that we are kingdom what? We are kingdom influencers. We want to influence the world for God. And you are playing. You know, someone gave a, 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 an account recently. I was in a meeting and somebody, you know, said, he said I was on a plane and he was going somewhere. And he met, right, on business, business class. And he, he just saw someone sitting there and the person was, you know, like praying under his tongues. You know, so he just, ah, he just thought to himself, oh, this is a fellow believer. He's speaking in tongues. And he went, his seat was next to the person. He went to meet him. Oh, you know, my name is so, 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 so. I see that you're praying in tongues. So you're a believer. The person said boldly. He said, Satan forbid that I am a believer. That is people. He was not praying. He said, I'm not speaking in tongues. I am doing incantations. He said that at this particular time, there are certain incantations I need to do. That's why I'm doing it on the plane. But you, you are there. You are playing. You are Instagramming yourself. As you are doing, you are studying the Bible. You are Instagramming yourself. They are not playing. They are not playing. So intimacy, I, G, the understanding that ye are gods. You know, Dr. Freud talked about that a little. That you understand that you are a God, you are a king, and you are a priest. But guess what? Your kingship is powered by your priesthood. Your throne is powered by your altar. For every throne, there is an altar back in it. See, don't be swayed by, you know, all the successful people that they are saying they got there by hard work, by diligence. Yes, there's a place for all that. But there are levels and there are realms. Just Google right now. Google. Google Steve Jobs in Indian Temple. This is Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. He has done so well. Apple is so great. It's worldwide. You think it's because of his intelligence. What did he go and do in Indian Temple? For a whole year, no alcohol, no sex, no sunlight. And you are here, you are playing. Don't fool yourself. The work ahead of us is a lot. And you must be there on that altar. If you say you want to rise to the top of the mountain, you think the devil will just be smiling at you and say, oh, this girl, she's going, she's shining bright for God, let's leave her. You're joking, no. You are on his target, number one to ten, you are on that list. Because it's going right after you. The moment you just made a mistake to say you want to become a kingdom influencer. But guess what? Which brings me to H. The Holy Spirit. We have a superior advantage called the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not for speaking in tongues alone. The Holy Spirit is not for falling under the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the advantage that we have. Because we don't have any graveyard to go to at 2 a.m. But we have the Holy Spirit to help us. Scripture says he is our helper. And it says in John chapter 16 verse 13, it says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth. All truth is all truth, not some truth, not a few truth. So whether it's marriage, whether it's family, whether it's government, whether it's business, it will lead you into all truths. It will tell you what investments to make. It will tell you when to remove, when to try. In fact, literally one of my mentors said to him, said with, um, that the Holy Spirit said to him last year to convert most of his naira to dollars. Today is almost millions richer because he obeyed that simple instruction. 
It's the only spirit that will convert the secrets you receive in the place of intimacy to strategies you can use in the marketplace. So we have that advantage, and he's the one who helps us to operate both as kings and priests. He's the one who helps us to be there in the upper room praying and then go to the boardroom legislating. He's the one who, re who reveals and give us, gives us the secrets of God in the secret place, and then we use it as strategies to win in the marketplace. So understanding what you carry and what you have, you have the Holy Spirit. So from today, stop going to events and be expecting to fall under the anointing. Yes, that is good. But much more than that, the Holy Spirit wants to help you to advance the agenda. And he's your helper. He would help you. And finally, T. And I'm giving an acronym for light. What is L? What is I? What is G? What is H? And T. Tests and trials. I know we don't like this part. But see, there's nobody that would rise that will not be tested. There's nobody that God promotes that he does not test. You will go through the test, sir. You will go through the test, ma. That's why James tells us to count it all joy. So that when this test has done its full work in you, you will be complete, lacking nothing. If you want to be complete, you must go through the test. The test is how you are pruned. The test is how you are refined for the work ahead of you. Look at David. David was anointed king at 17. What age did he ascend to the throne? 30. God took 13 years of testing him, of preparing him, of pruning him. Look at Joseph. Let's talk about Joseph for a while. My time is up, but give me two minutes. You know, Joseph had the dream. And he became so proud. He went to go and tell his brothers, hey, guys, you know, you guys are going to bow down before me. Pride and arrogance. Because what is a cell? Even if, he, if I was Joseph's elder sister, I would have given him a knock on his head. Because what do you mean? Imagine if he had taken that attitude to the palace. But God had to take him through the journey of the pit to the prison before the palace. So embrace your pits. Embrace your peace is for preparation. You, know, you don't just arrive as light, shining bright. No, there's a process. And if you jump the process, you'll come out half-baked. God is not making half-baked children. God is not sending half-baked people to the top of the mountain. It's those who have endured. So stay there. Stay there. Stay there. That's what it means to be light. And finally... We have three C agenda in the mountains of influence. Number one, we've been called to make contact without contamination. The world is our space. We are meant to, you know, we've been called to the assignment of reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile people out of the darkness into the light. So we make contact without contamination. And you, you keep yourself from being contaminated by being intimate. You keep yourself from being contaminated by staying closely to the shepherd, right? Because it says, I have sent you as what sheep amongst wolves. The people you are dealing with, they are wolves. They are ready to tear you down. If you like, don't stay close to your shepherd. So we maintain contact without being contaminated. Number two C is we make content that delivers deliverance. That means your content must be so good. You know, I said earlier that there's a level of excellence that brings about deliverance. That people will come in contact with your work, your product, your business, whatever it is, your article, your Instagram. Do you know that I get DMs from people saying they just scrolled through, through my IG page and they started crying because they've been delivered. What do, what do people encounter when they come through your social media page? What do people encounter when they come through your content? Do they encounter envy? Do they encounter shame or do they encounter Jesus, the one who is truly the light? Because scripture says, in him was the life and this life was the light of men. So the light that we are carrying is his life. So your content will be so good that yes, people will see your work and give glory to God. And finally, converts. Our real assignment, 
whatever the mountain you've been sent to is to make converts. So whether you go out shouting boldly, give your life to Christ, or it's through your work, through your assignment, through your mission, you must make converts. You must come, you must literally have a meeting with yourself and say, Punto, this year I want to bring 100,000 souls to the kingdom. And you create a strategy for how to do that through your work. That's what God has called us to do. And that's our assignment as light. Thank you. The Light Conference 2023, if you thought that was profound and that was from the throne, can we please celebrate God's gift to this generation? Fontoy Boye. No, I don't like that energy. Come on. Wow. Please, you may be, please be seated. Hmm. I think these words are words that we need to go back. There's going to be a replay of this. And we need to watch and watch and watch again. Oma. I don't know what to say, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a light in the business and finance sector. Thank you also for all the help you gave me when I was planning this conference. She had started a similar conference some years ago, and I needed help with regards, how do you plan a kingdom-focused conference that people want to be at? Thank you so much, Funto. God bless you. Thank you so much, Funto. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's echo lights together, everybody. L. I can hear us. L. I. G. H. And then T. Yes, yes. So please, let's have all of that at the back of our minds, even as we go on. Uh, today, even as we leave the event today, we are gradually coming closer to the end of the Light Conference 2023, and we're going to be having our last panel session for today. Uh, the people on this panel sessions, I call them walking fires. They have so much influence in their various industries, and trust me, this panel session is one that is going to change your life for the better. Um, I won't be moderating this panel session. I have someone who is going to be moderating the panel session, but we have four panelists on this panel session. We have Funke Akirimade, who is representing the Education and Family Mountain. <laughs> Temilade Salami is representing the Environment. I wanted the moderator to bring you up, but it's okay, you're up already. <laughs> and Funto Ibuoye once again, please, can we celebrate her as she comes up? And Godwin Ebok representing the media. And moderating this panel session, ladies and gentlemen, is Lady Jade Sola. Can we, can we celebrate her? Yes. Thank you, Jade Sola. Please make you reach everybody. All right. Are we having fun today? Um, once again, my name is Jade Sola Adewodu. And of course, I'm professionally called... Lady Jade, and um, just before we go to our panel, I mean, I'm really excited because um, I'm actually, um, I, I know two people on this panel session personally, and we are literally just going to be jesting. <laughs> so we're going to be jesting and having fun, but most importantly, um, please, once again, everyone, please, can we celebrate the gift of God that is Ahoma? Please celebrate. Make it louder. Make it richer. Ahoma, thank you so much. All right, and um, by the way, um, I'm going to start with Funto Boye. She was the first person that gave me a platform to do my first fashion show. Yes, my first ever fashion show. And of course, Tim Lade, uh, we started ministry together about five, six years ago. Before, you know, man carried her and NYC carried out to Abuja. And of course, she's really doing amazing things. Please, once again, please put your hands together for the panelists. All right, now moving on quickly. The mountain of influence, and, and you know, um, other speakers have spoken about how um, you have to be excellent and all of that. But we are actually going to the dirty work. We are going to the dirty work, and I'm going to start with you, Funta. Now, um, first and foremost, you started with the becoming conference whilst you were working out, and I was also there when you launched the Beautified. So we we go way back, way way back. 
Now, how did you transition from being in the beauty industry into um, five, the, into the interior industry? What process did you have to go through? I love it. And really, really just boils down to being led. You know, I, I, I studied accounting in Covenant University. I'm a proud <laughs> eagle. <laughs> And I remember that on my final year, Tara Duruto, he came to school to speak. And that was the very first time I was hearing her speak. And for some reason, I wanted to st stop being an accountant to become a makeup artist. And I remember that time our company was offering a scholarship for makeup artists, you know, for a training. And I applied and I was really praying, oh yeah, praying and fasting to receive the scholarship. Anyway, long story short, I didn't get the scholarship. But I found another school, another makeup school online where I did my makeup training. So the three, I had three months when I graduated from school. I had three months before NYC. So I did my makeup training, training that three months. And then I started NYC. So I was literally a makeup artist. I, was, I did brides, you know, if I had, if I had continued, I'll probably be a superstar makeup artist now, but you know, I did brides. And then in that same NYC, I did my icon and I passed, you know, in one sitting. And then I actually worked as an accountant. And two years into my role as an accountant, and this was me balling, you know, this was 2012. I was 22. I had a car and a driver to myself, you know. I was counting millions that was not exactly my own. You know, I was making money, you know, right? And I was earning in five figures, six figures, right? But I got to a place where I, I became so dissatisfied. I remember that there was a season where on Sunday evenings, I hated Sunday evenings because it reminded me that I had to go to work on Monday morning, and I was so... How many of us can relate with that? <laughs> I can I have witness in the house? Please, my continue. You know, I was so dissatisfied. I knew that I had to leave. I knew that... I knew that there had to be more to my life than just being here, right? And I remember, I didn't know what I was going to do next, but I just had this strong nudging to resign. I remember having a meeting with my boss, and he kept asking me, okay, if you leave here, what exactly are you going to do? I had no answer. I didn't know what I was going to do next, you know, but I just knew. I, I literally even had to lie to my mom that I was only two weeks. I was taking leave for two weeks because I could not tell. Like, like it didn't make sense. Then, no, this was 2012. They were still saying that there are no jobs in Nigeria. And you, you have a good job. You have a car and a driver. You want to resign. Change concierge, you know. So I, I told my mom that I was only two weeks leave. So thank God that within that two weeks, someone sent me a LinkedIn email saying that, you know, there's this role that she recommended me for. It was supposed, it was the PA to the CEO of a big interior design company, right? And she said, she told me the date of the interview. I went for the interview and I got the job. And that was my first encounter with interior design, right? So I was the PA to the CEO for three months. This was me that I had car and driver to myself. You know, I was living large. I started entering BLT bus. I'll leave my house 5.30 to be, get to the, uh, I have to get to my boss's house first by seven. I'll plan our day, schedule our, all our meetings, all our appointments, and we'll go to the office from our house by nine. And then when I close by six, I'm going back to our house before I now go back to my own house. Oh, Person that had car and driver. In fact, my salary was not even half of what I was earning then, but it was a training season. That's why I say go through your process, yeah. right? It was a training season for me, and I'll, I'll, I'll say that it was one of my best, you know, career times, you know, those three months. And then along the way, before I left my accounting job, I'm so sorry, I'll soon be done. Before I left my accounting job, I had written my first book and published it. The book is so excellent that if you see the book today, you would, you would ask me if it was done in Nigeria. Back in 2012, it cost me 1.2 million naira to publish 1,000 copies of that book. So you can imagine how excellent it is. And I remember that I went to volunteer, I was volunteering for an event, and the keynote speaker of that event was the MD of L'Oreal at, at that time. And as it was done, he was leaving, he picked up a copy of my book because I had, you know, put it out for sale. And he went through the book and asked who did this book. So I came to meet him, he gave me his card, it was a Saturday, he said I should come to meet him on Monday. I go and meet him on Monday. After five, five few minutes of speaking with him, he calls the HR. That's how I did interview. That's how I got a job in L'Oreal. I worked in L'Oreal for two years before they shut down operations in Nigeria. And when they wanted to shut down operations in Nigeria, they wanted to move me to the Ghana branch. But I was already married, and my husband was not going to Ghana. So if my husband is not going to Ghana, what am I going to Ghana to do? So I turned down the, um, I turned down the offer to go to Ghana, and then long and short, that's how I started 528. Yeah. Okay, now, um, I'm coming back to you because I know that there is a process. I mean, 
There's a process um, before you could even name that business 528, but we'll come to that. So, ma'am, Mrs. Funke Akirimade, um, your process, because I understand that you clocked 50 about two years ago. Three years ago, pardon me. She doesn't look it. See, when you're a kingdom person, you look fresh, like the sisters of Lebanon. You're always fresh. You, you don't crack. So, Ma, how, how has it been for you? I mean, having to manage, to, being a director in two schools, I know managing the, the gift of children, because, I mean, I, thankfully, by the grace of God, I, I have um, three years in the education sector and understand, and then having to manage children with special needs. Mm. Because you are shining in a, um, in a sector where a lot of parents leave their children to the mercy of their tabs. So how are you not able to manage these gifts and be accountable to God at the same time? Okay. That would give up my age. <laughs> I struggle with the mic because I'm... An old school, right? You are not. You are new school. <laughs> but first of all, let me even just commend Homer. Honestly, awesome conference. I'm so delighted to be here. And before we came up, I was talking to Funto, and I'm like, I felt so old. I was like, oh, don't worry. It's all in the mind. But honestly, um, just to answer your question, I think that when we recognize the assignment, that we understand that the one who has sent us on that mission will give the um, backing and the Love. wisdom and the strength and everything, the resources you need to do the assignments. So for me, finding myself in education was um, a chance thing, right? I got married as a young bride and I was trying to have children. How old? <laughs> okay. Well, in my time I was young. I was 24. <laughs> okay. right. In my time I was young and I was shipped abroad with my husband and I was trying to have, exactly, I was trying to have children and they were not forthcoming. There was a school opposite my house. So I went to volunteer. Yes. So from there, when I, when, when I was there, I realized that the Nigerian children came in from Nigeria, smart but not expressive. And for me, that was, a, I mean, that was, I was curious. How come we have smart children but they're able to express themselves? So I, un, I quickly understood the role of rote learning that we were exposed to as a country. And by the time I had my first son, we came back to Nigeria. And I said to myself that, okay, I have my child now. How am I able to provide this kind of education that I was exposed to, you know? And, you know, I started the school. Although my first son didn't come to my school, but my second and my third son came to my school. Now, how have I stayed true to my schools? In fact, my particular school is 20 years this month. Wow. So I've run it for 20 years. A round of applause, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> As in not somebody's age, but it's okay. <laughs> Ma, please continue. So my middle son was a pioneer student of my school. So my middle son is 21. I, I will say my journey is because I understand the assignment. I'm not doing education because I want to be out there. I'm doing education because I understand foundation. The Bible says that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I'm very passionate about change. If you want to look at Nigeria, it's one of the things I really gets at me. I mean, I look at Nigeria, I look at this room full of talents, right? But yet we're so backward. And if you truly say we're Christians, why, are we, why is our light not truly, truly dispelling the darkness? So for me, I understand that the children that come to me at a very tender age, so my school is zero to, I mean, 2 to 11, and that's for me, that's the foundation for education. So if we're able to catch them young, if we're able to instill godly values in the children very early, I believe that they are on, a, on their way to, you know, making um, impacts in the world. I do not see children, I always say that there's no dull child, they're just bad educators. Any child that comes your way, as a, an educator, you should be able to, you know, harness the potential, understand their learning needs. There are three types of learning learners. There's the kinesthetic, the auditory, and the visual learner. So in your classroom, you must provide for these three types of learners. You're a wonderful educator. Yeah, of course. And I mean, to attest to that, um, I remember when I was teaching, I, I, I thought in a school where we had yeah, special needs children, and there was a child, he was autistic, and he had um, a facilitator. By the grace of God, by his second year, he was we able to wane him off the facilitator because it was costing the parents a lot of money. Aside the fact that they would pay about 1.8 in a term in a school in Lekki. 
So what she says is actually very correct. We actually don't have, you know, slow learners. But actually we, so that's why we need um, kingdom leaders to shine their light in the education sector because the destinies of generations are really in your hands. Yeah. And it's very, very important that you actually hear God, how do you do it? All right. So, Timilade, how, how do you feel? How are you feeling right now? I feel really, um, really good. Um, you know, this is photo coming up was an answer to something. So, I feel really good. Okay, Thank now, um, we know that you are you're the founder of the Echo Champions because then it was Echo Warriors, but we evolved to Echo Champions. Now, how did you get to that place? Because, I mean, I understand that you normally, Tammy doesn't, if you throw something on the floor, she can beat you up. <laughs> Tammy will flog you. I mean, I mean, if you eat whatever, whatever trash or whatever um, snack you take, put it in your bag and you throw it on the floor and Tammy should see you. I, I really, I don't know what will happen to you after that. <laughs> you know, but Tammy, how did you evolve from that? And did you hear a word? Did God tell you anything? What happened that birth Echo Champions? Um, I think for me, it was redirection. So I got into Unilag studying dentistry and dental surgery. Um, I think up to today, my father still has my name saved as Dr. Dr. I used to be a Muslim, Dr. Kafayat on his phone. And when I got to Unilag, Unilag, Unilagged me, yeah. you know. And they told us to go home after one year that I didn't cross the College of Medicine. I was a brilliant student, so they cut off about 100 of us anyways. And um, my father didn't have leg now. Nah. <laughs> So shall we protested. I led the protest in Unilag that time, and they gave me marine, they gave me marine biology. I have never heard of that course in my life, but God instructed me to go and accept the course because most of my classmates they left. So I got. Sorry to, to interrupt you. So how did God instruct you? Were you in a trance? Were you like? Were you walking okay. on the no, road? No, no, no. See, when people say God instructs, it's not like you stand and God is my my father, my child. <laughs> It was actually somebody that confirmed what, you know, my, my mom first said it that, okay, I know anywhere you go, you excel. And she just sent it randomly, but that was a word to me, like, okay, yeah, if I'm going to do the marine biology, let me just do it for four years and do it well and just graduate. But that was my own mindset. God did all of that because he knew that if I studied dentistry, I would have probably dropped out because I can't faint if I see blood right now. <laughs> so I got into marine biology and, um, you know, I went on a field trip, that was what happened, to collect water samples, and I saw one community that was littered with plastics. I don't know if you ever see something, it's just the way if anybody drops anything now, I would feel so angry because I'm like, that is not the way to do it. And I went back to my lecture, I was like, is there no, is no, like, there should be something we should be able to do about this. And I called my classmates, guys, let's go for a cleanup, and 100 human beings showed up for a cleanup. That was like that moment that I said, okay, this is what I would do. Like, I looked around. For me, there was not really a template, per se, because everybody was doing it. It was like a social enterprise and everything. So we did the whole thing, and God said, you know what, this is what you are going to be doing. And thankfully, my husband just started dating me then, and I was like, is this what you want to do? He started sending me resources. These are the people that you should start following. He sent me articles. I used my own money. I wasn't even collecting money from home to subscribe to newsletters, paying in dollars just to be reading and pumping myself with knowledge. And I didn't know that God was preparing me yep. for something because now everybody is talking about climate change and climate education. Mm -hmm. And God had prepared me four years, three years before now. So right now, if you're thinking about climate education in Africa, I humbly say my name will probably come up top too because God knew that there was going to be a space for me to feel when all of those things happened. So I don't think that what happened to me in Unilag was was just a mere coincidence, because by all standards, I should have gone to College of Medicine. But God knew that he needed me in his space, and not just needed somebody, he needed somebody who is a believer. Because trust me, when you get to the global stage, you know that that's where your real strength mm. and your real intimacy is tested, where you're working with. You know this LGBTQ thing we are talking about? It's like, some of us just see it on Instagram. Me, I'm in a committee where there are many. So how do you manage it? God was preparing me before then. So. Yeah, I think that, that's pretty Please put your hands together for Tim Lady. All right. Hi, Godwin. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank First you. and foremost, blessed are you amongst women. <laughs> and well. I, I just really feel like it's very strategic that you just had to stand at the very beginning. Because in the beginning was man. Wow. And after wow. man was... Wow. Are we, are we, are we, are we together? Yes. Please put your together for yourselves. All right. So, um, Godwin, being in the wellness um, sector... What, how did you get there, first and foremost? And I understand that you, you have a thing with discipleship. 
So how are you able to navigate, you know, your position as a priest, mm -hmm. as a discipler, and also in the wellness sector? Okay, that's a very good question. So yeah, so for me, um, being in the wellness sector started with going to school, right? I studied human nutrition and dietetics for my um, bachelor's degree, and I also did master's degree in the same thing. So for me, it was a case of um, going to school, first of all, to study human nutrition. Of course, that wasn't the plan initially, um, the plan was to study medicine, and they gave me, they gave me um, nutrition. And at the time, it was very funny because I was like, okay, I'll go to school four years and study food and nutrition. Like, like that didn't look, um, it didn't look interesting. But someone just spoke to me about it, and I was like, okay, this there are opportunities. I I, I believe she scammed me, because um, it turns out that the opportunities she told me were not really there. But anyways, I took the course. And I graduated, I did well, and you know the natural progression for a lot of people. Oh, you're done with school, do you want to go get a job or do you want to go do a master's degree? And my dad said, go and do master's first, you work later. And so yeah, that's how I ended up doing um, human nutrition. Now for me, um, the twist, or maybe not necessarily a twist, um, the um, very interesting thing that happened was in 2016, 2017, I told myself, okay, Godwin, we both know you're not going to work in a hospital. Right, because I did an internship in a hospital and I realized that God delivered me from studying medicine <laughs> when I was there for six months because I realized it was a very, I mean, I can stand blood, I can stand dead bodies and all of that. I mean, with the patients, the patients I managed, um, <laughs> you know, before I left, I was supposed to do meal plans and all of that for her. She died. Yeah. So it, it wasn't, I mean, I just, I, I, I just told myself, God, doing, this is not what you're going to do. <laughs> you're not going to be in a hospital. Instead of that, go for nutrition education, teach people about nutrition. And I told myself, okay, where will I do that? I can't be going from, I started going from school to school. At some point, I was like, this is not really working because I'm not making money out of this. So I took to social media. So that's how the media part came about. And um, that's what I was doing for a very long time up until um, last year where I had that leading to start um, talking to people more about the gospel and doing it online. And that was something I was always doing from like, as far back as I can remember, but it was almost always offline, right? There are some of us that, if not that, we know that we cannot afford to leave the media sector as believers. We would not have anything to do there because you enter Twitter, they are dragging this one, this one is fighting this one. You know, you enter Instagram, you know that everything is largely, you know, it's just mostly optics. So for me, um, moving from, you know, wellness, I mean, I'm still doing wellness full time, right? And then doing discipleship for me was God's clear leading. And, you know, him asking me, God didn't take this thing important because I've been dodging it. You know, I did a podcast, I abandoned it. I did several things that he asked me to do when it came to discipleship, teaching people the gospel. And I almost always abandoned it. Then at some point, I had to tell myself, okay, Godwin, you know you're getting old. When do you want to start really obeying God? You know, because, you know, the first um, panel session, the common thread in what almost everybody said was obedience. Yeah? So at some point, I told myself, okay, Godwin, you have to do this. You have to take it seriously. And you have to be on social media. You have to um, start teaching people. And that's how I just put out a post randomly on WhatsApp. Oh, I want to start this thing. How many of you are interested? People showed up. And they've been showing up since then. So, yeah. That's Fantastic. Please put your hands together. You push, you make it louder now. Ah, all right, okay. Now, um, just before now, uh, Madam Fuluke had given an illustration while she was speaking, and she said, you know, when God gives you an instruction, sometimes it, it takes you on details yeah. where I'm supposed to go to the speaker, but he now says, you know, Lady Jade, go to where Godwin is. After that, you turn 360 degree, then face the screen, and then go straight. This is where I'm going to, sir. Why are you stressing me? But then he now makes you go all the way around and then brings you here. Yes. Now, ma'am, that's ma Madam Funke now, what were your detours? And, you know, tell us the stories of the tears. And they're like, God, why have you forsaken me? Why me? <laughs> so we actually want to hear because a lot of times I've come to realize that, you know, when you, when you hear the stories of how people have gone through certain, you know, um, storms, like just like what you know, from, um, Funto said, you know, your tests and your trials. In that process, God actually does prune and refine you. So, your refinement process. Please share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hmm. <laughs> Once you hear who, it's about to go down. Yeah. So, I think um, 
I was in the wilderness for 10 good years, between, my, between 40 and 50. I think that my revelation came when I turned 50. And um, so I had shared how I started my school, right? But you know, as with a lot of young people, when you go, when you embark on something, sometimes you don't ask the right questions. Sometimes you jump into things without having clarity. And I've learned a lot from my wilderness experience. And now when I share with other people, it's from the place of awareness. And even though it was something that stretched my marriage, but I think we came out stronger as a couple. And how do I mean? When I started my school, you know, as a young bride, I came back and I started, my, I started the school. And there were, I, ne- I didn't have a conversation with my husband in terms of partnership. You know, and a lot of young women do that when it comes to business, right? You start a business from a place of passion and you do not cross all your T's and dot your I's, right? So, um, of course, with a startup business, you will need finance. And my husband supported me very well. But what, what we didn't communicate was partnership. And, you know, in the Christendom, we also have to be careful that we're not setting up people to believe that because you are a couple, you have to be business partners. If God has not called you to be yes, business partners, yes. it cannot work. And so, this was me running the school for 10 good years. And after 10 years, we got transferred to Lagos. And that was when it dawned on me that I was holding the business for the family. When I sit with people, when I was going through that wilderness experience, when people would ask me and say, oh, but what was the struggle about sharing? I said there was no struggle about sharing, but there was a struggle about having common vision. We can have a common vision for the family, but when it comes to a business, if you didn't sit down together to discuss the nitty-gritty of the business, who's signing the checks, who is taking what, um, what decision, then there can be problem. And I also believe that, like I said, I think because I, 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 I found myself in that place, I'm not sure that I had a mentor that prepared me for the journey. But when I look back, when the Bible says that all things work together for good, I truly understand that passage. God was dealing with me. God was dealing with me in the sense that my identity was tied to the business. So it was almost as if, if there was no business, if, if this school didn't exist, Miss A didn't exist. And this was God trying to get my attention. But he used the closest person to me. So it was, it's almost like, what do you have in your hands? And can you give it up? So when, we came to, when my mother got transferred to Lagos, the first year I didn't come with him because I felt I had a business. Why would I leave my business to come to Lagos? But very quickly, we had that conversation of, Family comes first. So I had to put a structure in place and move to Lagos with my husband. Thereafter, okay, you're not on ground to manage this business anymore. We need to, you know, have structure around who was managing the business. And it was difficult for me because something you've done for 10 good years, that was my identity. But this was God calling me higher. You know, I had to get to a place of submission to say, Lord, I would entrust this into your hands and I would... My home will not break over a business. Because each time I spoke to my husband, he would tell me, oh, I don't understand your problem. I'm not taking the school away from you. I'm saying that it's a family business and you have to be accountable. So you know when you have a one-man business, sometimes accountability is a struggle. So I learned how to submit, how to be accountable, and how to focus on the owner of the business. I'm not the owner of the business. I'm just a custodian of the business. And when God demanded it, I need to understand how to release it. And the release was for another assignment. You know, some, so that was my own with lens experience. It was a detour. When we moved to Lagos, my daughter was in a school where, you know, I felt she could do better. So I said to tutor her at home. And that opened doors for me to prep children for 11 plus, 13 plus, children who were going abroad. And it grew very fast. And the Lord said, are you ready to work with me now? You know? And I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? Are we, he said, we're starting a new one. I'm like, how? How can I come from this very big one to this very little one? And God said, would you trust me through this process? So sometimes, I think for me, the overall, overall lesson is, what I found out is, 
We tie our, our identity to our jobs, to things, and not to God. In the long run, my expression is who God says I am, with or without any business. Okay, fantastic. Now, please put your hands together, please. Thank you. Now, Timulade, how did you deal with the, the rejection you handled having to apply for Sussex? Because, I mean, yes, we, we want to hear that story. Don't we want to hear that gist? <laughs> we love gist, Abby. We want to hear the gist. So, how, because, I mean, speaking about details, tests, and trials, because that experience, even though it took a while to share, it stretched you. So we want to hear the stretch. Thank you. Um, okay. First of all, I'm a Tribune scholar, so I, I studied that. Put your hands together now. <laughs> if you've not, uh, stop it. Please say it. Wait, wait, say it again. Say, they did not hear at the back. I'm a Tribune scholar. Now make some noise. If you don't know what it means, go and Google it. Thank you. Um, so when I wanted to come for NYSC, um, I was posted to Abuja. And as God will have it, I didn't know any human being. But I went to Abuja, mm -hmm. and my plan was finish NYSC and do where everybody, ah, I'll just do my master's ASAP. So I prepared everything. In fact, I remember taking a break for like, I was off social media for about two weeks. I was, I don't know how best you've read. I read more than that. I read so well. I was so prepared. And this was during COVID. So achievement scholarship interviews always is in three stages. The first long list, short list, and then you now do interview. See, the moment you can get to interview stage, you are almost guaranteed because now you get to decide, you know, based on the panels that will be in front of you. So I was really prepared. And the day of the, um, of the interview came. First of all, MTM messed me up. Now, remember, I, I'm really terrible because I, I really, really, you know, prepared. And secondly... I started to stutter. If you know me, talking will be my own problem. I can talk. I know I can stay and talk for three hours. I will say things. But everything I tried to say did not make sense. And at that moment, I knew I was not going to get that scholarship. Even if I, anything happened, like I was not going to get it. And um, I'll say this publicly. It was probably the hardest time of my life. And I'll tell you why. Because... Of course, I didn't have support from home, so this was me just trying to do everything. And that was, I planned my life. Once I finish NYC, there's only to be looking for a job. I'll just go for a scholarship. And when I come back, I'll just do this one. But God wanted to show me that that was not the right time for me to travel. And he, he wanted me to know that me traveling was not tied to my success. So I didn't get it. And the second year, in fact, that year when I applied, I applied to about four schools or five schools. Everybody gave me admission, but I did not get scholarship. And then the next year, I applied to just, I think, three schools, but I wanted one school, and it was Sussex. So I put all my eggs in that basket. I didn't apply for any other scholarship. I went for Chibnin again, and just Chibnin. And this time around, I got Chibnin, um, and I, I went to Sussex. And I must tell you that when I got to Sussex, that was when COVID was ending. The year before my year that I would have gone, everybody that went, some of them came back home because they could not step out of their room. The year I got to Chibnin, that was the start of my global moves. I traveled to countries I've never imagined, fully sponsored without a dime from my pocket. And God was literally just, just telling me at that moment that, see, you, I want you to, you know, follow me. He did not say, follow me because I want to give you. Follow me and I will make you. So if that thing didn't happen, I would have actually still think that me staying abroad was mm. tied to my success. Yeah. So even before they told us to come back home, I'd pack my bag and came back to Nigeria. And I can tell you for free, I am excelling the way I want to excel. So all those things that God really did for me at that time was showing me that I will give you what you want, but I want you to know that your destiny and your life is not tied to opportunities yep. and scholarships. Yep. And I just want to encourage anybody here, you've, uh, you've gotten a lot of, in fact, I got rejection last week. Rejection, that on a normal team. You, you know if you reject me, do you understand? You, you can't, can't reject say, a star. Do you understand? And a star cannot you, be rejected. Two days after that email came, the email really broke me because I remember I, I just traveled, I came back from Qatar, and with my tired eyes and everything, I set up my ring lights, did that video for two minutes, and I did not get selected. The day after Two different organizations were fighting for me to come sponsor my trip to Onga. So I just want to tell you, see, just put your trust in God. Like, focus on God. Follow him. Make sure that that is where your identity is. And like, like, let me just add this very, very quickly. If you know me, I always say this thing. Temilade is not tied to Echo Champions. Temilade is not tied to Light and Cuttings. That's my business. 
Echo Champions has been on break for one year, but Team Milady is still existing. That shows you that your identity should be found in Christ and not from the things that you can do and the things that are going on well for you in your life. So thank you. Thank you so much. Are we, are we really having fun this lovely afternoon? Um, so I really want to touch on this story. Now, there was a time where, you know, Funto used to have this conference called the Becoming Conference. And honestly, when she announced to the whole Instagram that it's going to end, I was heartbroken because our five-star volunteer we were ready to run with the vision. <laughs> so how did you navigate that? And then from there, pick yourself up to begin the interior business. No, I started the interior business the, yeah. while I was doing Beauty Pet. But, but, was... but we still want to hear the interior business beginning <laughs> okay, story. Yes. I must really say, please put your hands together for Jade. Jade has <laughs> been an amazing, you're always an amazing support to everyone. Almost everyone I know has Jade supporting them. And it's one thing, I'm so sorry, but I digress, but it's one thing to know that you're a star. It's one thing to know that you're called to be number one and to play that. And it's another thing to know that you're called to be number two, to support those who are number one. I feel like Jade has that grace. Jade is an A-list supporter of people's dreams and visions. So thank you, Jade. All right, so I started Beautified Network in, in 2014. And in 2015, we had our first conference. Right, and I remember that in 2016, I was in church. I had just given birth to my first child, and I was, you know, in my church then. We had this nursing mother's room, so you, all the nursing mothers will stay in one room, and the screen will be showing the pastor. So, a, a fellow nursing mother came to meet me, and she brought an old journal. I can't remember what year, but years back, where she showed me where she had written becoming conference that was going to be a conference for women. And it was called Becoming, the exact same thing that I was doing. And so she showed me because she said, so she said that, you know, God gave her that idea while she was still in school. But that after she finished, she graduated, life happened, she got a job, and she just, you know, forgot about the vision. So as soon as she gave me that, you know, she showed me that I had a knowing that this was someone else's assignment that God needed to have done in this particular season. And because the person did not show up to that assignment, I was the replacement, all right? I was available. And so in 2019, after running it for five